and welcome to the Women's Speed Chess Championship. It's match number five. I'm Women Grandmaster Dina Belenka, and here today with me in the studio is World Champion Grandmaster Alexandra Kostinuk. Yes, hello, Dina. Uh, hello, everyone. I would say former world champion, but anyway, <laughs> nice. Thank you for your greetings, and uh, I'm very excited to see another match of this wonderful event that supports uh, women's chess. Um, and uh, let's see what to expect. We are indeed very excited about it. Let us first have a look at the format of this event. We will have 16 player bracket with eight invited players seated by their May 2021 PWS rating, eight players qualified from the main event, and uh, in the main event, with we, which we are having right now, we have 16 rounds. Well, it's like matches, eight matches, right? We have uh, 16 players, so it's uh, one eight. We're watching now match number eight of the one eight, and the winners qualify for the quarter of the finals. And each match, each one of these eight matches consists of three segments. It's divided into three seg segments. The matches are quite long, <laughs> I can assure you. I've been there, I've played uh, one of these matches. Mm -hmm. So the first, the longest segment is 75 minute segment with a time control of five minutes plus one second per move. Then after a five minute break, uh, it's followed by the second segment uh, with the time control three plus one. Uh, which lasts for 45 minutes. And then the final segment, uh, which can turn the tables around uh, very easily. Uh, it's uh, the most, the trickiest one. I suppose 25 minutes with one plus one. So it's a very special bullet segment. And well, we'll talk about, we're going to talk about, I think, in more details during the match about this segment. Definitely. Now let us move to the prizes of the event. Everybody is competing for the first prize of $20,000, which is quite a lot. And it was also increased uh, when the tournament was already announced. The second prize goes with $12,000. And uh, we have so far everyone who is competing in the 16th main event competing for a prize. Well, I must add that now we're watching the main event, right? Like the knockout uh, matches. But uh, there were eight qualification tournaments and each one of these tournaments had its own prize fund. Um, so the total uh, of the main event is $58,000, while the total of the whole Women's Pet Speed Chess Championship 2021 uh, equal to $66,000, uh, which is, again, I think very great for women's chess. And it's a very nice initiative from both FIDE and chess.com, the second year in a row already. Absolutely. Now let us have a look at the players who represent the main event. As uh, Dina mentioned already, there are 16 players. The eight one that were that have been invited according to the uh, FIDE Blitz rating, and uh, the eight, the other eight players qualified by a very difficult and hard qualification tournaments. I know that Dina played in some of them and had wonderful performances in uh, one or two events. So Dina knows how hard it is to qualify. And um, I was uh, on the other luckier side, I would say, because I got invited straight to the main event uh, because of my great uh, blitz rating. Uh, I think I'm seated number, I'm number four or five in the world uh, by FIDE Blitz rating. But unfortunately for me, I got eliminated by Harika Drenavali a few days ago. And so I'm just a commentator now. And uh, today, today we're going to have and to see another very, very interesting match uh, between two very strong players. Between Arina Crush and Nana Zagnidze. Dina, what do you think about this match? What that do you is, expect? That is going to be indeed very interesting match. But as you mentioned yourself, Alexandra, it is going to be also very 
very difficult match for both of the players and also a very stressful one. And besides, it's a knockout event, so there is only one place, there is only a winning place that uh, continues to the next stage. So there are, the stakes are high and I am uh, super excited to see how it will go. I do not think I have a favorite here, so my favorite would be the, the fighting chess, the fighting spirit and uh, a lot of action. Okay, well, uh, I must add uh, that Nana Zagnidze um, was, she's a former uh, Blitz world champion. She, she's a very big expert in playing fast chess. And Arena uh, Crush is uh, a several times US uh, chess champion, a very strong player. Uh, she's certainly an underdog in this match, as I can see it. I think if I would, you know, need to bet, I would, would bet on uh, in Nana's uh, favor. I think she's definitely the favorite. But again, uh, it's blitz. Uh, anything can happen. Uh, although it's not that stressful, I think this year in terms of it's a very long match. So if you lose one game or two games or even three games, e even in a row, uh, nothing. I mean, you can always come back. So I guess it's more about your ability to recover and to forget about what happened before and continue go forward because the distance is, as you said, quite long. Yeah. So I think we should go on a, small, on a short ad break and we'll be back with the match. And welcome back to the Women's Speed Chess Championship, day number five. We have a match between Grandmaster Arena Crush and Grandmaster Nana Zagnidze. And uh, the games are about to start. Let us get back straight to action. Yeah, let's do that. It's going to be a very long and exciting match. You uh, introduced uh, Arena as a Grandmaster. Are you sure she's a, a Grandmaster? That's I'm the just... title that we can see here. Mm -hmm. As far as I can see, at least that is what chat.com tells me. So um, I assume they are not. Oh, yeah. hmm. Interesting. No, because I thought that she 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 did not have a chance to complete. Uh, but yeah, she is a grandmaster. Good. Good to know. Okay, so we have two grandmasters in action, and that's going to be exciting. The first game has already started. Let's see what it brings us. 
We I have really a kind of Nimza Indian defense. Uh, so far, it's um, a known position. Irene is playing white. Yeah, she uh, often opts for this Nimzo uh, defense with knight c3 and queen c2. Somehow this queen c2 move uh, gained uh, quite a lot of popularity recently, even on a very, very high level. If you watch any top level tournament, you will um, see at least one of the games um, with this opening, with this line. And I think it's a very well-known theory. Um, I cannot really say a lot, but we see that white played f3 and e4, that's trying to be very, um, to build up a very strong center. And uh, black for the moment uh, is playing quite passively, I would say. So according to you, when did the theory end? Uh, have actually no idea because, <laughs> uh, no, I mean, usually um, B6, the six move B6, uh, I think is not like the most popular move in this line. Usually black prefers to attack the center immediately by D5 or C5 to play more, um, to fight for the center. While here after B6 and Bishop B7 and D6, black um, did not really uh, do anything special against white setup. So just c5, they did play on the 10th move. And well, visually, at least, I prefer white's position uh, a lot. Um, but the only thing that uh, their pieces, the white's pieces are not developed yet, right? The bishop is still on a fun, the knight is still on g1, the king is in the center. And it can, after e takes d5, black opens the e file, rook e8 can follow. And this kind of... Um, uh, position with the king in the center can uh, become quite dangerous for white. Yes, there is indeed already a threat. The pawn is hanging by both the bishop and the knight, while well, bishop e2 protects it. But yes, that's true that the knight is quite uh, weird. The only thing that I could see for him would be knight h3, knight f2 to mm -hmm. bring him here. But it would take two tempi plus castle tempi number three. And uh, during this time, Black uh, could actually come up with something interesting. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, but um, we shall not forget that White uh, actually can castle long. Okay, it will look a little bit... <laughs> it does look a little bit strange, right? To imagine White uh, castling long side, but who knows? Who knows? I mean, it's possible. There is also a saying that whenever your opening has a fianchetto bishop, you shouldn't be uh, you shouldn't be scary for any attack because it would anyway block the rooks to come. Yeah, but okay. Uh, somehow I don't know what happened in this game, but it felt like from the first moves I thought that white will be the side pushing, and uh, but right now the position. Is quite unpleasant, especially for uh, a blitz game, right? White needs to keep an eye all the time on this e file, uh, get ready for like bishop takes d5, knight takes d5 all all the time. It, it, this um, this um, threats are in the air. And c4, look at this move. It's a very interesting move. Black sacrifices the pawn in order to let um, her knight to c5. So the knight from d7 uh, has plans to go to c5 and then probably sacrifice um, on e4. Very, that is a very nice dynamical idea. It is true that uh, whenever your opponent is passive, you need to go active. And that is what Nana Zagnitsa does in this game by uh, sacrificing this pawn c4. Now, when we're still in the opening so to be uh, early middle game part alexandra how important it is uh, the preparation the opening preparation for such kind of matches for such kind of blitz games well it's quite important maybe not as important as in the classical game but definitely opponents i think uh, make up uh, some plan what to play it was what color what lines to try and since uh, the match is quite long you can have several uh, options and variations so if one uh, for example doesn't work you can change into something else and uh, um, i'm sure for example if 
well, this game already doesn't go <laughs> well for white. We can uh, already evaluate. Uh, this is a, not really a great uh, um, situation out of the opening that white got. So uh, I'm sure that uh, Arena will, is not happy with the outcome of the opening. So I'm almost certain she will change something in her next game with white. Yes, besides she's uh, already down on time, so that definitely shows that uh, she does have some problems here. Okay, yeah, knight uh, went to h3, hoping to have time uh, to jump to f2. And now it's a big question whether to sacrifice or not, because this sacrifice on e4 is very tempting, especially for a blitz game, right? It feels like you... I you want to sacrifice either on e4 or on d5, but again, to sacrifice or not, to be or not to be, that is the question in the air. And Nana is spending quite a lot of time. She had a very big time advantage, and look at it, look at it, c3. Wow. wow, very interesting. She does sacrifice something eventually, but not the piece for now. And yes, this kind of sacrifices, uh, usually you you also go with the intuition. Whenever you feel there must be something or not. Well, uh, the idea behind this move is, uh, of course, if the queen takes and the bishop on e2 is not protected, but if the pawn takes, and probably what, she, what idea she might have is to take on e4. So knight takes e4, f takes e4, knight takes e4. And with the pawn on c3, after queen retreats, she can take on c3. And so she's kind of improving the position a little bit, getting uh, ready and prepared for the sacrifices on e4. And Irina took with the queen, even though um, even though black can take on d5 or on e4 now, and the bishop the bishop is not protected. Somehow, looking at the evaluation bar, we can see that everything is not that dramatical yet for Irina. But here we go: knight takes e4. This is what followed, and we shall see if there is a um, if there is something concrete immediately, or if it's a more of a long term. Yeah, it can also be easily um, a positional sacrifice, right? As we call it, meaning that a black is okay to uh, play a piece down for two pawns, but uh, again, hoping to have white's king in the center as long as possible. And now let's see, knight takes g3, uh, queen takes e7, rook takes e7, h takes g3, and then bishop a6 and rook e8. But apparently uh, white can hold this somehow by rook d2 and knight g1 probably. Yes, they do have an extra knight here that could protect this bishop. So for now, should be holdable. Okay, queen f6 mm -hmm. followed. Ragion so, on Biru. Mm -hmm. And also uh, opening the rook, which is an x-ray. Mm -hmm. Too many white pieces are on the e-file. Starting with the king. Queen f3. Okay, black can just take on b2, but then it gives a possibility, a moment for a white to castle. And finally... White would breathe. It seems to me that uh, Black does have an easy play here, uh, no matter what happens. It is easy to come up with the moves. Mm, no, I wouldn't agree. I mean, when you sacrifice, you know why it's so difficult to play in bleeds. You, for example, you can feel that this sacrifice is okay. Is that, But again, when you sacrifice, you're down in material. And initiative, as we know, is something very temporary. So in order to prove um that your sacrifices were worth it you really need to be precise knight takes just three okay h takes just three and again after queen takes b2 castle is possible even, even though the bishop is hanging maybe the rook rook takes e2 is possible with the idea after queen takes f7 to retreat the king and uh, but white should take on f7 I think queen takes f7 and then knight f4. And an knight f4, that's true. Protecting and attacking at the same time. Oh my, now it looks pretty dangerous for Nana. It looks um, as, yeah, well, Ooh. as white is winning. <laughs> wow, um, this thing has uh, has turned completely. That what, I mean, that uh, knight g6 actually I don't like because I don't really see any ideas after that. The, knight, the, the pawn on g2 is hanging. 
So the knight will need to go back. And thus it's not so clear. Okay, it's nice to check, but <laughs> but check, as we say, is not a checkmate, right? Yes. And uh, I think knight takes it too would have been uh, much more precise. Although look how the pieces regrouped. Now queen takes g7, checkmate is threatening. So there it goes back to e2, threatening to take on g2. And the queen from b2 protects the pawn on g7. Now it's only about, I mean, it's about time. It's, I mean, it's so fast uh, that you really, sometimes you just lose um, track of what's going on. And yes, for the moment, black is winning completely. And I think uh, oh Nana my. will win this game. Oh, knight, of oh, knight of six. It was knight a mistake. Six. A knight of six, rook of eight. Rook of eight. Okay, yeah. okay. So There's it was not really a blunder. Oh, wow. Th this changed so so many times in the in the we didn't even have the time to react at the how how many times the evaluation bar changed in this game and it's a five minutes plus one game can you imagine it, it's what only the five plus one what is uh, waiting for us uh, in the future and here we go with the second game we already have queen's gambit accepted i have to say that i'm very pleased personally to see that that because it's my uh my main opening for black and uh yes let us see uh, how um how far they will go with the theory so now you will tell us you you are an expert here well personally um B5 is not my main move. I usually go with a classic approach of E6. And yes, I'm I'm very curious to see um, what this position will bring to black. I will obviously root for, for black here, but okay. Actually, we also have to pay attention to chess.com ratings. And we can see that Nana has a higher rating, like a significantly higher rating than Arena. Uh, so almost 300 points higher, and uh, it's a big difference. I'm not sure how often these players play on chess.com, right? It's also uh, quite important when we talk about ratings. Uh, but 26-28 versus 23-56 looks as a very big difference. Yeah, you know, it's a very interesting point that you mentioned. Uh, yesterday, Jennifer Shahari was hosting uh, the... Um, the, the commentary and uh, together with Elizabeth Pats and she mentioned that Arena is actually not playing quite often. She doesn't play quite often online. And uh, it's true that uh, well, previous times, let's say before the pandemic, online wasn't that popular and everyone used to focus on the classical rating. But um, now she takes it more seriously and she's uh, very competitive by nature. So it's true that she doesn't play much. That could actually explain her low rating, but I think she definitely, uh, uh, her rating is definitely underestimated here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need to play a lot to like uh, have uh, a rating that really reflects something, right? Because uh, right now, just simple numbers. And But anyway, anyway, the difference is there and we see a very tense uh, position that arose from uh, quite, um, well, usually it's a quiet line of the Queen's Gambit accepted with E3. At least that's what one expects when C is such a quiet move as E3. But as you can see, it turned out pretty sharp. Yes, that's true. It is also about this pawn on C3, whether it's, go it's going to die or not. Well, it's going it, to. It will, most likely it <laughs> will day, die anyway, yes. so the question is when. And I guess this is also, um, yeah, could be decisive for Black. Uh, how much uh, initiative could they gain while White will be going for this pawn? We'll assume that won't last long, but nevertheless. But for the moment, this pawn on C3 is it's also an extra pawn, right? So um, Black can easily give it back. But of course, they want to give it back in such a situation uh, where it will be quite unfortunate for a white to take it. Okay, c5, an effort to support the pawn. So if the bishop from a3 now takes on b4, of course, white will not do that because after c takes b4, a black has a very, very a solid extra pawn. Yeah, no, that would be even too protected past pawn one of them would be protected yeah definitely not that would be a suicide okay here we go d takes c5 followed and yeah c5 is a very very basic uh 
home break uh, in the Queen's Gambit accepted. So that was uh, uh, pretty much expected. Now, it is very interesting how she develops her knight. Uh, from one side, we know that the knight on the rim is dim, so one shouldn't put it on the side. But here we go. It is actually protecting and uh, planning to come back to the center uh, pretty fast. Yeah, but uh, the main question, what's going to happen after bishop takes before knight takes, before queen takes a three? I suppose uh, some knight will go to d5. And uh, then, but then again, it's black who's going to be down a pawn, right? Um, will the initiative be enough um, for this pawn? That's a big question, as I can see. And I'm surprised, actually, to see Nana sinking taking so much time, right? Almost one minute and 10 seconds she spent on bishop takes before, which to me seemed quite forced in some way because you don't really want to have that bishop over there. And that pawn as well. Mm -hmm. So I thought that bishop takes before and queen takes a three are almost obliged for uh, white. But nevertheless, um, Nana spent a lot of time contemplating over this uh, line. Sometimes the strength is blitz in Blitz is also that you're capable of doing some natural moves, uh, some logical moves quite fast without thinking. So this is what... Uh, you need um, to have this, yeah, this balance. You, you need to find this, a golden middle, if I can say so, right? Uh, not to be too fast because it's still quite a long time control, five minutes. It's quite uh, a long Blitz game. Uh, but uh, at the same time, yes, and... To, to so when to play fast and when to think it's always a question even in a blitz game queen to d2 i don't really like this move because queen f6 you see the diagonal is not really uh protects it anymore the big diagonal uh, i was thinking about queen to b2 but then probably rook b8 with the threat of knight d3 was quite unpleasant so that's why white uh, retreated her queen to d2 which looks as i said a little bit uh dubious to me but maybe it's like more a psychological effect and nana calculated everything and wow knight to a6 oh huh, this is weird this is weird and not pawn. not natural at all but if but, the knight yeah. manages to come to c5 it could be pretty intelligent mm -hmm. actually transferring the knight from b4 to c5 uh, looks as a very smart idea right now because after knight takes c5 knight b3 fork right is threatening and c6 well i would i would i would you know <laughs> try to develop to finish development with bishop e2 and castle somehow c6 is not really the move you consider and we uh, see that the players approach this position very like concretely they're not doing uh, obvious moves they definitely surprise us with every step they take here we go i guess the move of uh, black here with rook d8 in the same spirit you know as rook c1 it is true that they uh, they are yes they are being very creative here and well one thing that we uh, have to add is that the the fact that black is the pawn down uh, is compensated by simply lack of development from white side and this is what black should use in order to um, to equalize or maybe even yeah have a have a good play their only problem is the bishop on c8 which is still not developed and by the way would belong to this diagonal i would say but i'll get for now it takes it will take some time yes it will but for the moment this you know x-ray uh uh, this opposition of the rook on d8 and queen on d2 is very unpleasant. So why should somehow retreat her queen? I believe. I mean, it's bishop, for example, e2 is a possible move, but then you need to calculate all these ideas with knight f4, right? And uh, so that's why you cannot really keep your queen um, in such against uh, the rook. So you need to move it away, but where? If you go to B2, then Rook B8 will follow, right? Mm -hmm. If you move to A2, then you're under Knight B4. And it also doesn't look very pleasant. And although there are many, many squares, it seems for the White Queen, uh, you can, it's hard to find a good one. You need just one, but good one. And here, and we see that the time, the time difference was quite, uh -huh, bishop e2 at the end nana decides to go uh, all in i would say uh the idea is after knight f4 to retreat the queen 
Wow, Rook B8, Doxair, not, uh, we cannot, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not we guessing their moves. Any yes. move. yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, anyway, let's see. Let's see what happens. Uh, but the idea of white was to, like, invite Black's Knight to G2 and then try to trap it there. Uh, but now at least white castled, which is a great thing for white, definitely. Yes, this is a very good news for, for white indeed. I feel relief for the king. And now the only problem would be the queen. It is true that there are so many squares when you look at it, but uh, when I start to think, okay, where should I put it? You don't quite see the, the mm -hmm. right spot. Mm -hmm. Maybe to E1 is like the safest <sighs> here, because on A1 you're on the four, on C2 and A4 you are on the knight before constantly, and maybe A3, maybe Nana found another uh, safe spot for the queen, but anyway, you see how uh, Arena is playing? She's not, uh, she's playing that uh, using this uh, motto that a uh, threat is more dangerous than the execution. So she's not uh, really in a hurry to attack. She's improving her pieces to maximum and then hope it will eventually bring her some something. <clears throat> Neither is she in a hurry to take the C-pawn because for now it is... Uh -huh. uh... But she grabbed okay. it. <laughs> Just the moment I say it, okay. But uh, again, it's all about time now, 95, 96. And I don't really like um, um, black position so much uh, anymore, but okay. Knight now C6. you need to play faster. Anyway. Knight C6, okay, yeah. You know, Maybe. one thing that I find pretty uh, weird is that, okay, now we are in game. We were just in the middle game, but five plus one and players are already in a serious time tri uh, time trouble yeah that is um maybe they're getting used to the time control for now but to me it seem seems like they they were playing slow okay let us focus to on the action because there is a lot of action right now black is about to win 93 and rook g1 checkmate yeah ah good uh, so i okay. managed managed to level the score uh and uh it was a very interesting game, very interesting tense game, a very complicated one. Not, uh, I wouldn't say that there were so many ups and downs like in the first one. It seemed that black mm, dominated, uh, well, at least for mm, most of the time, right? Yes, uh, maybe they... there were some inaccuracies. I mean, oh, oh, where can, uh, for be, sure yes. there were. And by the way, look, Irina repeats uh, the opening, uh, her opening choice from the first game. So she is sure that the position she got, um, she misplayed probably a little bit. Uh... Yeah, that she, she has just something to change, quite a small detail, and it will be better. It is also an interesting choice because uh, usually whenever the position doesn't score for you, you, you tend to 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 change but okay for now one game is not enough to to make any conclusions about the opening mm -hmm. but okay that means that she liked uh, uh at least the outcome of the opening at some point or she improved a little bit uh already i don't uh, i don't really recall how the first game actually went the the center was closed, so there was d5, d5 at played, some point, yes. and the bishop was capped on uh, h4. An h4, yes, mm -hmm. this is what it was. So yeah, here okay, perhaps bishop a3 is the the new uh, move to to Nana. That could be ex that could explain the time that both players took, starting from this moment. Uh, let me just double check. I will try to open their first game to make sure. And the thing that I was uh, saying just before, um, mm -hmm. as we as we were advancing in the late middle game and uh, end game, players had only seconds on their clock. And what I meant is, uh, yeah, for me, it's it it's quite uh, slow for for such time control. Uh, Yes. Uh, what we, do you mean? Uh, are you, um, you mean that they are playing, uh, they're letting... Yeah, they are taking time, both of them. They're taking time. Um, but for me, I don't think... Style. Well, I don't think that these players are like very big expert in online chess when you're like blitzing out. And for them, uh, it's normal to, <laughs> to have this uh, time deficit on their clock, as I can see it, because um, they... I don't know, they're not really used to 
playing hundreds of games and uh, using the mouse on the time. I don't know. It feels I'm like the bullets. Uh, yeah. Yes. That would be a nice ex- that could be uh, an explanation to to this. It's true. And also, yeah, since these are only first games, I guess they will uh, they will speed up uh, eventually. But it is true that they, it seems like they both want to find out the um, what is the position about. So they are interested in it and they want to find uh, the right approach. But and again, I mean, when you're playing a five minutes, uh... You don't really feel like you need to um, hurry. Probably in bullet, they, they will start playing much faster. Now we'll they're see. taking we'll their time. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, but I must add that one second increment, it's really uh, very little. It's very little. You're playing, you, you, you're you thinking then, okay, you have enough time. You will, you know, uh, somehow make a few moves and uh, get uh extra time but it's just not happening <laughs> it's not happening you make moves with one second on your clock constantly and it's kind of very hard to i personally know how painful it is you you always think that you have an increment so you will have enough time to move but in the end of the day it's more about your your mouse technique how fast you can do and also of course your, your brain but it's sometimes it's just not enough to move one second only and that is also why we're here for to, to see that action that will be happening uh, once they have uh, seconds on the clock. Well, at least they do have this increment. It's not it's not big, but it helps a lot because if you play one uh, zero three zero and five zero, it's completely different. Uh, purely online chess, and uh, I even i mean for me it's even difficult to call it chess because what's starting to um, go on on the boards when uh, players have less than 20 seconds um, can hardly be called chess but now we're watching a chess match there is an increment even though just a small one and let's see what happened in this game in this um Nimtso Indian with queen c2 and f3 e4, where Nana, uh, already second time in this match in a row, uh, give up completely the center and uh, ruins uh, the reputation of many chess trainers who, <laughs> who are saying to their students that center is like the key, cap- key factor and so important and you should, should fight for the center. You should never give it up. And here, look what we have. Uh, Black gave it up, you can say, and but she does get a very good position game after game. What's going on? Why? Why does it happen? I guess the c5 uh, pawn, even if it's uh, isolated uh, from, it's like, uh, even if it's a pawn, pawn island, it's not an isolated pawn. It's not the isolated pawn, but it's isolated from other pawns. So it's weak. But here it controls the key d4 square. So uh, there is some kind of feeling that uh, black still has a control of the center. Even well, though it's, actually, uh... I think the reason is that while white is making these moves like f3, e4, they're kind of building up a very beautiful center. But the pieces, the king, the bishop on f1, the knight on g1 are standing there. So they're not developing. So, uh, okay, they're fighting for the center, but we shall not for- forget the second very important factor is uh, pieces development. And uh, black is definitely up in pieces development here. And that what matters, at least in these two games that we've been um, following, uh, white has suffered a lot from uh, the lack of development and the key kink in the center. In just a moment, you were saying it's uh, Black pushed the E pawn, which eventually took uh, even more control of the center. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, now it's already an end game. Uh, but you see, it's interesting that it was moved 21. Well, what move we have? 23. And the bishop, the white bishop, is still on F1. It has not made a single move in this game. And that's what matters a lot. Yes, and eventually the rook is suffering because of it. Okay, here we go. There is some hope for bishop e2 and rook d1 in the future. 
Well, they will make moves in this game, of course, but the position is very, very unpleasant already for white. Now black can play a5, a4, start the, to push, uh, uh, to attack the b3 pawn even more. And the rooks are very nicely uh, doubled on the b file. And as soon as the b pawn moves away, the rook can get to b2 and disturb white's king a lot. Yes, the, this is a very typical plan. Now the question is how White could stop it. So should he ignore the comp and focus on the development or is a four needed, which would definitely uh, uh, weaken the pawn structure on the queen side of White? Well, actually, King's I thought it's the only move to a4. Okay, we see that before square is weak after that, but letting Black play a4 seemed very... Mm, it doesn't mm, look as the right move. Now uh, we have this pawn exchange here and the knight came to b3. For now, there is no uh, infiltrate on b2, but there is a weakness. There is a weakness, even two weaknesses, I would mm -hmm. say. Well, c4 could be compensated by c5, but okay, it's more about the activity of the pieces. And here yep. we go, knight takes c5. Rook a3, we expect mm -hmm. what happened. Now and the king will need to go to d4, probably. I wanted to ask if, the, if, if it wasn't dangerous, but it seems like it's... Well, it is, but everything is dangerous. King d2, rook b2 seems to, to be even more <laughs> dangerous, right? Yeah. So, I mean, sometimes you don't really have uh, any choice. And, um, and the time difference is huge. The time difference is huge, and even though it's an end game, the king in the center here doesn't feel very safe. So rook a2 no. looks very um, nice here, attacking the pawn on g2, preparing rook d2 somewhere. And uh, but the most important thing I think for Nana here is not to um, give up this time advantage, just make moves a little bit faster, and press Irina on this time difference. Isn't it some kind of a critical moment where you might be having something concrete and uh, could it be reasonable to, to take some time to, to find the right It's approach? a good question. It's a good question, but it doesn't feel here as a critical moment. And uh, actually, it's to the, to the player to decide, right, to find these critical moments. And you see how much time Nana is taking and it can just be crucial uh, at the point when she actually needs it because the king in the center we say it's not stable it's not safe but at the same time it is supporting the c pawn which eventually can run very fast and oof i don't like this exchange at all i don't like this exchange at all because the rook was so much more active the black rook compared for example compares the rook on a2 and the rook on e3 right uh the rook on e3 was the poor rook was blockading this e4 pawn and we know that the rook is not supposed to uh i mean blockade the pawn i mean it's a very strong piece but okay nana uh spent a lot of time she decided to exchange uh her rook and the position is about equal now uh even i prefer it for white and the time look at the time Oof. Of yes, two, the time which... is equal now, so psychological advantage definitely shifted to uh, Arena's um, part, but mm -hmm. once again, uh, it's uh, all decided on the seconds. Um, about the king, it is true that uh, when there are many pieces, which we saw could be dangerous, but the, as as fast as the pieces exchange, the, king's be the king becomes more and more strong and uh, dangerous and uh, the advantage of white grows and this is what we see here and here we go the pawn that you were speaking Aye, of yeah yeah uh, she blundered the pawn she blundered the pawn now oh. it's a drawish end oh, game okay. and uh, well it was completely winning for white and i was uh, you know preparing my speech <laughs> okay <laughs> arena actually offered to draw but sometimes when you play on seconds you just don't have I mean, you need to really be used to chess.com interface yes. and uh, when to figure out where, where this draw offer comes from. They just sometimes don't know. The players have no idea how to offer a draw and when, when to accept it. how to it. accept it, how to accept it once you hear this sound, dun -dun, there is something, but you don't know where, where to click. You just yeah, yeah. have seconds to make the moves, yes. 
it's a draw well it's a good save for arena of course if we compare i mean if we look at the position uh um right after the move a4 for example but if we recall what happened in this game uh, then we understand that uh, arena might be disappointed might be disappointed and what do i think we have a i mean not only we but the players mostly have a break now they do have a short five minute break in between this long uh, segment of 75 minutes so we'll go now to um this break as well and we'll be back for more chess stay tuned
and welcome back to the Women's Speed Chess Championship matchup number five. Today we have Grandmaster Irina Krush against Grandmaster Nadia Zagnitsa, and we already had the first part, the, the half of the first segment, five plus one. We're about to see how the game continues, and we're super, ex super excited. And on top of that, the score is equal, one and a half per each. Alexandra. What are your yes. stakes? Yes, three three games have been played so far. Very tense games. Uh, a lot, a lot um, of um, have been decided in the last seconds. So the most important thing, especially closer to the end of the match, will be how well players will keep their concentration on seconds, because time will decrease the fatigue will increase and thus will lead to more mistakes to more blunders uh, and the one who holds better will um will be will become the winner of this match uh for the moment it's an equal match yes or we can say that i um, was mistaken because or maybe it's too early to say um i was almost sure that nana will be uh the one uh, leading this match but um, right now we cannot really um, we don't really see her uh, as a favorite for the moment the score is equal and actually she was lucky not to lose the third game right because Irina at some point she had a um, decisive advantage and let's see what happened in this game again the queen's gambit accepted with um, this e3 um, move the e3 line but now uh, white took immediately on c4 no no knight b2 d2 no tricks was playing with the c pawn trying to be more solid indeed it is true that uh, it might be a little bit uh, early to judge but at least uh, Nana is being a clear favorite and we can definitely see that uh, so far Arena is showing an absolutely equal fight. This this is true. So let us see how it continues. And regarding the Queen's Gambit, well, one thing I can say, well, once again, yes, this approach is more solid. But one thing I can say is that this knight on c4 is a um, clear, so to be tiny advantage for white once they manage to put it here, that they, they manage to actually provoke b4 the positions are usually very much um, comfortable for white, I would say. Mm -hmm. Maybe, I mean, but at the same time, well, the position is quite symmetrical, right? The only difference is uh, the B pawns. So the, the black pawn uh, is more advanced. And uh, thus, I mean, it, it has pluses and minuses. Because at, uh, at one side, it attacks uh, the, the C3 square, which can become quite important, especially if the knight from D5 jumps there. But at the same time, it's, uh, it's quite, it can become a weakness. And it can uh, be easily attacked. But to tell you the truth, for the moment, I like uh, Black's position. Well, Black has succeeded with his main uh, issue, the development of the queen's side. So yes, the rook is on c8, the bishop is on b7, both knights are really nice, so there is no um, no reason why Black would be worse here. Well, maybe there are some, but uh, hard to understand why I would call this position about equal, but what I don't like, I don't like the move g3 very much. I don't really see the point why to weaken this diagonal and um, the bishop on f3, right? Because the pawn on g2 was kind of protecting the bishop. Now it's hanging and there are some ideas um, appear uh, such as knight c3. Mm, even now knight c3 looks quite interesting. Let's put it this way. A pawn sacrifice, which is not possible to be taken because of the knight on d4 would be hanging. That is true that g3 together with 
e4 is a little bit strange. Usually one tries to put a kind of a barrier of uh, either pawns of f3 and e4 towards this bishop on b7, or simply not to, yeah, not to play e4 when you want to change the bishops, uh, the light squared bishops first. Also, Queen's Gambit in general, and uh, this position in particular, is uh, full of uh, dynamics. So there are many uh, general um, con conclusions here, but we should also see the, the concrete ideas. So e4 is attacking the knight, then it might move further and attack the bishop, which could cause some troubles to Vlad. Let us see. The position for now remains more or less equal. But, uh, well, we're on the concrete side right now. Uh, remember you asked about when, about this key moment, right, of the game, when to think and when to play faster. And that definitely seems as a key moment because now Black needs to decide where to retreat the knight. And there are several options, uh, including, including one with intermediate knight takes a four, which seems impossible to find during the game. Actually, I don't really understand it myself. Bishop takes d4 is... Oh, I don't like it at all. You shall not give up uh, such a bishop if you're just, I mean, really forced to. And here it didn't feel... It didn't, but uh, clearly, uh, Arena didn't like some lines with e5, and she felt obliged to give it up. But I don't like this decision. Yes, and now, well, at least uh, Black gained back this bishop, so there is uh, no longer two bishops' advantage for white. That could, yeah, but from the other side, the pawn c3, if, mm -hmm. if it's going Black to be lost, yeah. Pawn, yeah, this would be a typical pawn down. Sometimes in Queen's Gambit, accepted, we do sacrifice a pawn on the queen's side for the activity, but this is not this kind of pawn. It's usually a pawn that you can easily attack, so kind of a B pawn, which is isolated from other pawns. But here, it's not the case. And we have, uh, we already Black have... decided to sacrifice an exchange. Was it like a decision? Well, she hoped to, I don't know, actually, maybe she hoped to take, Arena hoped to take on F1 here. Bishop takes F1. Mm, but it doesn't look as a very good exchange again. You see that we had uh, like a, a series of exchanges. And it's very important in chess. Sometimes we say, okay, we have this value of the pieces, bishop cost three, I mean, knight cost three, rook. And it seems so obvious and unless <laughs> what, I mean, what to do, when to exchange bishop for a knight, when to exchange uh, a knight for a bishop, when to exchange this pair of pieces or uh, not this one. I mean, it's very, very mm, um, difficult to explain and to feel it's uh, really a mastery a positional way mastery sometimes when you play against a strong grandmaster uh, nothing really goes on you exchange pieces but you just feel that suddenly i mean little by little your position deteriorates and but nothing is going on no like tactical blows no complications but just simply exchanging pieces and if you understand what pieces to uh, leave on the board in this concrete situation and when, uh, which pieces to exchange, it really can give you a tremendous advantage in your game. Definitely. It is also about this balance and uh, sometimes intuition. Sometimes you just need to fill the position or to be familiar but with this yes, position. Yes, intuition. What is it? <laughs> I, actually, it sometimes is... I just put... Um, uh, I think it's equal to experience in some way. Yes, this is definitely a knowledge and experience that you achieved during a long period of time that you can use some kind of, uh, yeah, in a sense. And look at the time. And, well, uh, yeah, Arena too late. resigned. Yeah. yeah, Arena resigned. And um, quite an unfortunate loss, as I can see it, because the position was very complicated, very nicely looking for black, but suddenly Arena decided to exchange her um, bishop uh, on d4, and the position just collapsed after that. So that, had, that, that might have been a crucial mistake yeah. for in that game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it's, yeah. yeah, it's not really, it's more positional mistake. Should, should, well, sometimes positional mistakes come from, uh, from tactical, yeah, tactical uh, inaccuracies in your um, 
calculation. Mm -hmm. Even how you exactly. evaluate, sometimes you evaluate, then you just uh, miss one idea, and simply all your strategies mm -hmm. uh, is wrong. And here we go for, with the game number. Okay, it's game number five. No, six. Game number six or five. Well, it's two and a half to one and a half. Yes. <laughs> okay. That makes four, right? So it's game number five, it's as we figured five. out. Yes. And uh, it's a game, it's a, is it just a, the third game that Irene is playing or uh, what? It is, it is. And it is the third game that we see the Nimzo Indian also from Nana's part. Mm -hmm. And a uh, little, oof, Queen to of three. Yes, is this that? is definitely new to us. Um, but okay, h takes g5, queen takes a8, and I think after knight c6, the queen is trapped. I mean, it's it's not... Uh, I'm surprised to see this move because it never works. Wait, isn't that early, too early to be, uh, to not, yeah, to be... Uh, so sure, <laughs> maybe. No, 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 no. Wait, I, I, I meant is that isn't that too early for white to not know or this position either? Like, yeah, that's why. Usually, I was such surprised. moves you, you either know them or or do not know them. Maybe she mixed up some ideas and some lines. Sometimes it happens. I mean, you are certain you saw this idea, but you know, there's a big, a little difference of uh, the pawns uh, somewhere on h7, a7, and uh, the whole position is uh, completely different. And I think Arena mixed up some lines and ideas. And uh, and actually, that's what can happen during these matches. When you uh, lose a game, it's very important not to start losing in a row, not to go in this kind of tilt situation. Definitely. You just lose another and one after another. I mean, one, one um, score difference, it's not a huge difference. It can be easily uh, um, fought back, but... Uh, as we said in the beginning, it's also about your ability to recover and to forget what were the results just before and to just continue playing uh, as if nothing happened. Actually, it's easier said than done. True. And I think I it's, a quality, it it's a quality of a big champion uh, to focus on the current situation on this exact moment because you tend to... I mean, your emotions tend to overwhelm you and you tend to still keep thinking of the games that just uh, had finished. And uh, it's happened so many times in my tournaments, in my matches. In, uh, and even worse, you know, when you give a simultaneous exhibition and you make a move on one board and you switch the boards, you go to the next one, you're still thinking about that one and you make <laughs> actually a move uh, still thinking of the one just before and um, keep making several. Definitely, I think it's well known for, for all of us. And, uh, you know, this brings us to another topic that uh, sometimes uh, people say that this is a tendency for women chess, that uh, as if women were um, um, less uh, so to be emotionally stable. But I'm pretty sure that uh, you, uh, as well as me, are big fight fighters for 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 same abilities for women and men. Uh, what do you think about it uh, regarding the emotions wise? I'm pretty sure you have uh, lots of things to say here. Well, I mean, I think it's as difficult for men as for women to um, concentrate and to control your emotions because if it would be so easy, everyone would have been a uh, champion. And uh, it's, difficult in not in every field not in uh, in chess every single sport and a high level sport top level sport requires a, a very high level of concentration and a huge uh, um, talent of controlling your emotions and being stable in some way so it's quite difficult of course women tend to uh, lose control of uh, their emotions a little bit uh, easier than men do, I think. But but again, it's more a social thing. I'm 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 certain that uh, if women uh, trained in this way, right, they are capable of controlling uh, their emotions and overcoming men when it comes to controlling your emotions. But it's very. It's very hard to do for both, for men, for women, when you play uh, some sport. 
Oof, Knight B five actually has been played in the game. Isn't that a slight mistake? Yeah, Looking at it the seems so. Bar. Mm -hmm. It seems so because Did Knight. The, uh... mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. No, Knight B three and Knight. Uh... Even then, Queen takes e5 looked very, very good. But knight there was b5... a simple capture, yes, in one move, but knight b5. Mm -hmm. But knight b5 seems to be like the move in the wrong direction. And again, it's not that clear. Maybe it's a good move. Queen f3, knight d6. It's, it's still the position is very, um, it's great for black. They don't have an exchange, right? They, an exchange down. But the king's position is very weak, and uh, the knight on e5 is hanging. The queen on a8 is almost trapped. So probably white needs to to go away. I mean, to play queen f3 immediately, not to lose the queen. This moment where when you can save your queen after such a long uh, trap uh, over there on a8, you psychologically really want to bring it back. But after queen f3, for example, knight to d6, and the questions remain how to protect the knight on e5, how to protect the pawn on c4. But again, we um, discussed this topic in the first game, I think, or in the second one. When you're down the material, you do have some initiative, and um, it's quite uh, challenging to find the right moves. It's not that easy. And the initiative tends to slip away. If you don't prove it here and now, then you can end up without an exchange in an endgame. This is interesting, you know, because from the other side, uh, many experts say that whenever you're playing Blitz, it is always better to, to have attack. the strategy. Yes, when you when you attack, it's always easier to attack when to defend. In it's general. easier to attack. But especially if in... in in if blade. you have an even number of pieces, uh, okay. of course, of course. I mean, if you attack in the play against the king, is also quite quite a good thing. But um, again, uh, when you sacrifice, uh, then every move uh, starts. Uh, they're starting to be uh, uh, more Price important. Of every move is, uh, is higher. Mm -hmm. Actually, I don't know why after king b one. Bishop a6, yes, you played. Uh -huh, because the knight was hanging. I was thinking to somehow to trap the queen there. But okay. Okay. And here we go with the sacrifice on a3. Black uh, gains uh, an extra pawn. Well, knight e4, knight c3. And look how interesting. Black has still eight pawns on the board. Have you seen <gasps> such a situation? Wow, Seven, that is whereas true. move 17, that still eight pawns on the board. That Amazing. is true. Boy. Yeah, even uh, neighbors are uh, impressed yes, by the number of pawns yeah, yes, uh, Black indeed. has in this position. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and oh, we do have. Uh, oh, she's, okay, I, I was three, surprised that she sacrificed. I mean, she exchanged the queens because I thought, okay, the king is very weak. You shall not uh, really exchange it. But okay, the reason was uh, the move knight takes f2. And mm -hmm. Nana is winning. It's a completely won situation. Yeah, and here yes. we go. We have the result. And. Uh, um, we now have the leader. Nana is leading two points ahead, but once again, as uh, we already mentioned, uh, the distance is so long that two points, oh, two, two points are are not uh, a big deal. Here we go with the same uh, queen's gambit accepted. B4. Will we see bishop c4? I think so. Yeah, I think Nana was should be. Although we'll see. A knight b to d2, right? She played in the uh, yeah, and she. She goes for it. Okay. So she has two options. She prepared two lines, apparently. I'm curious to see when uh, Irina will start uh, changing the lines in Queen's Gambit accepted. But for yeah. now, she's uh, she believes in her in her b5 move, uh, mm -hmm. uh, which is also an approach. This c3 pawn, we are already familiar with this one. Shall we see bishop b4 coming soon? I think so, if it allows to go to If it B4. allows, because after bishop a3, there will be no bishop b4. Or oh, after queen b3, right? Ah, then yes. a5, right? Something similar to that we saw in their games. Yes, we could see. So, yes, the the intrigue is who will be the first to change, uh, who, will first to, who will be the first to change the way 
it went. Do you recall how their games went? No, I can uh, try to check it. Bishop e4 see. seems to be that the, the how it was uh, after bishop uh, a3 we had something like c5 uh, d takes c5 and knight a6 wasn't that the um, wasn't like that the, op the I'll check I'll check I don't rely on my memory <laughs> anymore <laughs> it's better to check if I... actually that's exactly how their games went queen to c2 this is their first game in this line queen c2 bishop uh, b4 and then a5 has been played a5. okay it was a5 yeah uh, the same the same so for the moment they are following um i believe their first game yeah they're following the first game and here Irina is thinking whether she should repeat with bishop b4 or go for something else there are different moves here of course there is a5 which could be by the way just in transposition we shall see yes So Nana is thinking, Nana is taking her time to think. And a5 Yes, yeah, that's what white. she did. Okay. Yes, that's what she did in the first game. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, no, no. The pawn was on a No, 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 no. No, yeah. It wasn't on a Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it might be the new approach here. It might be the new approach. Short castle. Okay. Bishop a3. Okay, so c5. Well, actually, I think that was something very similar. It, it looks definitely similar. It could be still a transposition c5. And after d takes c5, knight a6. So would that uh, lead us to the game, uh, to the second game of the match? Yeah, yeah I think so. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they're repeating the moves. But you see, still, they're repeating the moves, and mm -hmm. Arena's already. Two minutes down on time. Yeah, on that's surprising. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, yeah, this is, uh, to me, it would mean that they might not be that uh, confident, at least uh, Black here, not that confident with their preparation. But yeah, she changed her, her uh, way of playing here. So in the first game, she played c5 after bishop a3, and we discussed yeah. this move. And now she played knight to a6, which seemed... Um, well, c5, I just like the move c5 that she did in the first game, but maybe that's also a possibility for a black to play. And it doesn't really change a lot, right? She can always play c5 later on. Of course, yes. The positions seem decent for black. Still looks like they equalized after all. This is what you want to, to do as black uh, in uh, in the opening. Mm -hmm. Night. Is supposed to come to d5. That is a dream square for knight for black knights. You know, I didn't mention it, but in general, I find the b4 square for black knight in this kind of positions more interesting than, for instance, c5 or b3 because this b4 square it allows you to 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 always jump to d5, which is also a key square for black. I mean, as long as there is no e4 um, disturbing you. So for now, I do like how the knight is here on b4, but okay, it's uh, it's also about uh, concrete uh, concrete stuff, whatever it will be easy to keep it there, because uh, as we remember in the previous game, knight went back to a6 and then to c5 in order to get the pawn as well, which he didn't manage eventually. Yes. Mm -hmm. Will white be able to solve, to solve the queen's problem here? Because I remember that in... The second game, which actually Arena won in this line, mm. White did not really manage to find a good spot for her queen. And here we go, Knight B D five. Isn't that an accurate inaccuracy? W wasn't that better with Knight F? At least it was more natural with Knight F uh, D five. Yeah. What did yeah. she like? Uh, why did she decide to go on with a knight bd5? It seems more passive, definitely, and taking yeah. control of the of the queen side, which was in uh, in black's um, where black was dominating. Okay. I don't know. I have no answer to this question because the knight on b4 seemed very. Uh, yeah, play this, uh, definitely this d5 and b4 are the squares for the for the queen's gambit, except that knights. Okay, let us see how it continues. Maybe now back to B4, <laughs> you know, nice. being able to accept 
uh, the fact them. that you made a mistake is quite an important uh, ability in chess well, in life as well definitely i recall once i had a game uh uh well it was uh, 10 years ago in my first higher league of the russian championship i uh my queen was on d8 and um i had uh some kind of i think distraction psychological distraction and i needed to move fast and i decided to play queen d8 d7 and then i went to the to the war closets you know to calm down to to breathe and i came back to the board and i played the queen d7 d6 and then yeah. eventually i won and you will be surprised to hear that this game was actually against alina kashlinska mm -hmm. so, um the the reason i tell these stories for me it's like a lifetime example of sometimes actually accepting your mistakes in the game of chess it is painful but it could actually be worth it mm -hmm. indeed indeed and what do we see right now white has an extra pawn the king is in the center uh although there are not so many uh, pieces uh black pieces that can attack this queen um we'll see if uh black uh has enough initiative or not for this uh pawn that they sacrificed let's see let's put it this way i'm not sure if it was part of the plan this pawn sacrifice but nevertheless they're pawned down right now and hoping to get something this pawn seems um, more i would say more strong than weak and it it does a very important job protecting the knight on d6 which is just a monster not allowing the rook to come to c8 stopping the pawn so life seems pretty good for for white here the only problem is that the king on e2 is in the center but once again no one is there is no one to attack it so for now everything is uh everything well, but under white's control the queen is uh, under attack right so now uh, white yes. needs to decide where to retreat it where to go with the queen or whether to go or yeah rook c4 seems as a good alternative as well and as you can see the b file is the only hope for black i think it's the only um well, they're only, yes, um, part of the board where they are better, probably together with the knight on d5. And uh, that's where they hope for this compensation. h3 is a very nice move, some prophylactical move that I can't really understand straight away, <laughs> but uh, seems uh, quite a deep understanding of the position, this h3 move. H3 could stop a uh, one day knight g4, which wasn't a threat at all, but also it could be a place for a king to retreat. But it is uh, it's far unusual. away <laughs> yeah, when the king is on e2 and you play h, uh, you prepare the h2 square for it as if it would jump for for squares. But okay, everything seems to be uh, um, still uh, safe for right here, nevertheless. Yeah, it's very safe, of course. But now we're entering this. Uh uh super blitz stage right one second stage of the game uh, where players will need to uh, make moves faster since they're running out of time and again this ability of keeping the concentration uh, in this very hard and nerve-wracking situation is very very important to be successful in blitz Maybe H6. Yes, definitely. <laughs> if, <laughs> to, if, just to make a, to pass the, the ball as they stay from one uh, um, side, side to, to, another. to mm -hmm. another. Yeah, exactly. Well, H6 seems to be more like reasonable, right? Because knight G5 can be, um, oh. be quite unpleasant. Yes, there was a possibility to take on C5. Knight takes C5. And again, those possibilities, big or small, they they happen they happen on seconds and if you are able to spot them and it's very hard it's very hard to spot them on seconds you really need to have a, a sharp eye for that trained eye for that uh, then you're a very strong blitz player and uh have you just uh noticed that nana was the one who refused the um of course she has an extra, extra pawn the repetition oh yeah look at three uh okay 
Well, now some complications, tactical complications. Queen a3 seems to be the saving move, not only saving, but uh, leaving Beyond. white leaving white with a big advantage. Well, an extra exchange advantage. And it seems as uh, if... Ra no, no, make, make your move. Ah, <gasps> you see? Yeah, Irina. Okay. Lost on time. And actually, okay. Nana barely, I mean, she made her move with 0 0.1 seconds on her clock. Uh, we're going to see a lot of heartbreaking situation in one plus one segment of this match, I can assure you. Yes, definitely. Yeah, that was uh, heartbreaking. But okay, the position of uh, Black was uh, pretty... Uh... Yeah, so it's but, not that disappointing, yeah. but still, when you have this, you know, little time, you always you have the tricks. Mm -hmm. You have a hope. You need to continue. No, no one knows what can happen. Even like, the even the mouse slip. It's after all an online chess. Uh, is it? I think uh, if this game will last long enough, it might become the last one of this segment. Right? We still we have uh, less than ten minutes. Uh, till the end of this segment and the players do see this uh, same uh, chronometer uh, chrono timer whatever it's called um, if they want to of course they have this possibility to keep an eye on it yes that's true uh, do you think that could uh, be uh, that that uh, the leading side could uh, use it in their favor you know by uh, scratching your nose before the rematch like drinking some water definitely it's uh, uh, if you're allowed yeah it's a part of strategy i mean if you're leading uh with a big score uh and you still have like three minutes extra minutes uh, and even if you're in a lost uh, completely lost situation it's it's completely fine okay we can talk about like moral things and ethics and ethics. so on more yeah. more like um a high <laughs> um topics but i think it's completely by the rule it's not pleasant when your opponent does that but if it if the rules allow it and i would even say encourage it why not <laughs> why not if you don't like this kind of situation then you should play uh by different rules and when players agree to uh play with this uh, kind of um uh, regulations and regulation then yeah okay. it's just a part of a job I well, guess. everyone is in the same situation, right? So yes, I don't really true. see uh, why some players start complaining, uh, especially in uh, arena tournaments. It happens often when there is less than one minute uh, left in an arena tournament. Yes, and it's um... you can just sit and wait, <laughs> even if you are three queens down. Yes, and... especially when you play against someone who is lower rated than you and you do not want to, to lose those rating points. You just sit and wait and uh, then nothing happens. Game is just stopped. You know, it's... um. I'm um, actually, uh, I was very curious uh, to ask this question, uh, uh, you in particular, as you participated in this, um, in this event already. And uh, from one side, uh, it's like your answer is um, uh, completely uh, normal. But from the other side, I'm still a little bit, uh, so to be upset because, you know, I'm, yeah. Chess is a sport, definitely, but uh, you always kind of hope that there is some r romanticism around there, you know, with uh, like being uh, trying to to be loyal to your opponents and and all. But okay, of course, I understand it. So if it's your, it's in your favor, the rules allow it. So well, you, you I mean, it. it's if we uh, enter a very like um, delicate stage, right? Uh, there is like some. Like fair fair play and all this kind of uh, topics. Uh, but again, I mean, I can understand both sides and I have been on both sides. I, I mean, I, of course, I prefer to play in a very like um, clean way without uh, tricky situations, without double uh edge situation if to win to win in a style and uh, but i know and i faced many situations in my career uh when players okay crossed some certain lines that some people can consider uh uncrossable but it's it's a discussion it's a very long discussion yeah, and i can say yeah. that i um 
I can understand both sides. I can understand those players who will never cross certain line, a certain limit, and who set up these uh, um, limits to themselves. It's not about the rules, but it's about uh, chess being like a loyal, a royal game, and and you need and your life um, um, principles. Yes? yes, and I know that there are some players who say, okay, it's a sport. There are rules. If it's allowed by the rules, I don't care about anything else. And we've seen so many situations like this. This Armageddon games in World Cups, when players play with, you know, in a completely drawish position, uh, just trying to flag. And I mean, okay. Yeah. It's up to uh, a certain player to decide what's Everyone possible, decides. what's not. Yeah. And we um, set up our own. Um, uh, levels and principles and for example for me uh, something um, there are some things that are completely undoable uh, such as for example when you're playing in a hopeless situation online and you make this move that you you will never do in uh, like a real chess you put like a queen under five attacks you know, yeah. hoping for a player to pre-move or something like this. I think that's definitely something that I don't accept at all. I don't understand at all. But, for example, waiting, uh, if you have three extra minutes and this is the you have a completely lost position, but you're leading in score, and just sitting there and not resigning, I can mm-hmm. understand that. I mean, it's your time of the game. You have five minutes and you can go and do every, anything you want. So why not to spend them all if you're leading the match? For me, that's completely understandable and doable. But again, there are different people and different views to this, the same topics. So everyone is to decide on his own, uh, whether it is his own limits of what is doable, what is not doable, but definitely as long as there are the rules that accept it, you cannot really criticize. Um, yeah, you can say, I would not do that. Okay, then we'll see you in the same situation. And then, <laughs> you know, there are so many people that criticize others. And when they end up being in the same situation, they do exactly the same thing or even worse thing. So, you know. Just and, don't uh, judge and, don't, and you won't be judged. That's, I think, the only way to proceed. I do agree with, the, with these words. And uh, by the way, speaking of fair play, uh, have you seen this incredible case of, uh, um, was it Boris Gelfand's opponent? Yes, who, uh, yes. Yeah, yes, he got so, uh, actually a wild card a wild for card, the World yeah. Cup. Now, that's amazing. And that's I amazing. respect uh, such actions a lot. Uh, I, I'm not sure I will be able to do it myself. I, I don't think, think you so. wouldn't even have like you. I mean, you are like uh, the third person. Uh, wouldn't even have a um, this this idea in your in your mind in your hand when you're under this in the game under this uh, uh, pressure and all just thinking of uh, how could I make it better but for of my course, opponent. I mean, okay, that's more, <laughs> of course you have time, time is ticking and you're in the game, but if you have a choice, will you do the same or not? That is the question. Also. And also. I I don't have the answer. Okay, I mean, of course, it's good to say, uh, to sit now in a relaxed, you know, situation without trying, without needing, uh, this, without this need to uh, qualify for a World Cup, right? And say, oh, of course I will do that. But... Who knows what will... Especially happen. knowing that hybrid uh, qualifier was uh, also a, a chance for many who wouldn't have it in normal conditions because uh, there were so many, for instance, grandmasters who are way stronger in Blitz, especially on blind Blitz, and well, yeah, just playing online. Well, this wasn't a classical... Well, to tell control, you the yeah. truth, I uh, think that a uh, take-back option for online chess should be allowed. And then it's up to the player to decide whether to give this option or not. But I think it's a good option, a take back. If it's take a back option, wow. Yeah, you, you do remember, I mean, there are some sites where this uh, option is allowed. When you make like a, uh, an obvious mouse slip, you can ask your opponent. You want you ask you your take opponent, back. okay? Yes, yes. yes. You press this take, take back. back. Yeah. No, 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 no. You Once press, you've no, 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 no. You, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You ask your opponent, and again, it's up to him or her to decide whether to allow you to take it back or not. 
but I think that yeah. should be uh, definitely a possibility for online chess because there are so many unfortunate mouse leaves that completely you know ruin the logic of the game and uh, that's quite uh, sad and there yeah. were so many mouse leaps in uh, hybrid qualification tournaments and, and also it is very easy to understand when you're facing the the when your opponent is uh, making a mouse leap you can, yeah. you can say it immediately it's not just because it would be a blunder in most of the cases yes yeah. In most of the cases. I mean, when you cannot really defer a mouse leap uh, to a blunder, then you don't allow the stake back, right? Uh, okay. Probably. Anyway, what's going on in this game? We have a few seconds. We have 15 seconds till the end of this segment. And the question remains whether the players will... Uh, yeah, I think I think so. I think they will end this game and it will be the last game of the segment. So good for them, actually good for them. Because I think... Uh, in my match against Harika, we started uh, the last game having 16 seconds on the clock. And uh, it's like an extra time, right? It's adding 10 minutes uh, more to your match. Was the score even well, at that? No, no, no. I was leading and actually I won <laughs> this game. So I cannot really complain, but... Wow. Then next, and I, I was leading plus three in the first segment after the first segment, but I completely uh, collapsed in the second one. I lost minus four, uh, was actually my favorite time control, which is three plus one. Out of the three, I would pick three plus one if I needed. Wolf, bishop c4, look. Ouch, that hurts. Okay. That hurts. And mm. completely, completely winning. Now checkmating. Why does checkmating black? Oh, Oof, oh, that was yeah. a blunder. That was a blunder. A rookie she seven find the check. Ah, well, check, still checkmate would have been a little bit stronger, but <laughs> since this move won anyway, uh, nice. wow, what a finish! What a finish! Uh, quite uh, an unexpected finish because Nana was uh, completely two dominating. Two ahead, uh, winning two foot. Okay, yeah. one pawn eventually. Yes, that was a. Oh, that was a. Yeah, a she big... was dominating the game, and you see, just a second uh, lost concentration, and and that's it. That's so it, the only mean. idea that uh, White had, by the way, this thing I wanted to mention, you know, uh, this bishop f1 has been so ugly for for like for ages here. And once White took the c5 pawn, the first thing they did was to play c5 and activate this bishop. So this kind of bishop c4 was the only idea and the most obvious idea. And yeah, here we yeah. go. And she completely forgot about this uh, bishop since it was locked on f1 for such a long time that after c5, she just played a5 automatically and thus missing this uh, this killer move, bishop c4. But what to do? Okay, Nana is still leading. Nana is still leading, plus two, four and a half to two and a half. Uh, okay, it was a very sad loss, very sad blunder, but she needs to forget. And uh, refocus, refocus on the new segment that's coming up she's still leading and you know sometimes uh it reminds me that uh you don't need you shouldn't just think about your ideas but also think about your opponent's ideas what does he want sometimes your hand making moves a little bit faster just milliseconds <laughs> faster than your brain that often happens to me in blitz game you just make this move and this like this exact moment when you done with you completing it your brain realizes that it's a blunder ah nothing you can do anyway the match goes on the life goes on and we're going to have a short break and we'll be back with the second segment of this match which is going to last for 45 minutes three plus one the players will play we'll see who will win
and welcome back to the Women's Speed Chess Championship matchup number five, Grandmaster Arena Crush versus Grandmaster Nana Zagnitze. Before the games uh, resume, we already have a segment number two with three plus one. Nana is leading. But before that, let us remind you about the upcoming events and not just events, but the 2021 World Championship. Magnus Carlsen will be facing Yanni Pomnichi, who fantastically won the candidates tournament with one round to spare. We are not going to lie, uh, your dear hosts and commentators, uh, Grandmaster Alexander Kostinuk and me, one Grandmaster Dina Belenkaya, are rooting for Yanni Pomnichi because he comes from our um, mother country. Alexandra, who is going to be your favorite on this match? Well, you already answered this question. <laughs> You already answered. I'm very excited. And I know that chess.com coverage will include exclusive video footage from the playing hall. So definitely the event. We're all looking forward so much. And I'm excited. I'm excited about this one. And uh, I'm sure it will be the event of the year. But for the moment, we're talking about uh, some other matches, which are nearly as excited. Women's Speed Chess Championship. And today, um, match number five. Uh, of the one eighth of the final uh, between uh, Nana Zagnidze and Irina Krush. And the second segment uh, of 45 minutes has just started uh, with three plus one time control. And we, again, we have the same Queen's Gambit accepted, I believe. Somehow uh, I'm not mm -hmm. surprised. And it is the same position that yeah. we saw just before. And you know what? Finally, they are playing fast in this opening part well they need to play faster they need to play faster they had a break they had time to um refresh their memories their opening lines uh, uh some players uh, prefer to do it uh, some players prefer to rest that's uh, also a question of a match strategy and uh, but we remember that in the game uh was the same well similar position arena lost by um after after exchanging her dark uh, squared bishop while the position uh, seemed to be very uh, nice for black and now she actually oops look knight d5 she played knight to d5 and instead of knight to d5 uh, the evaluation bar you saw that it dropped after bishop f3 because of a possibility to take on f3, bishop takes f3, and after queen takes f3, because you don't really want to ruin your king's side pawn structure, a knight takes b3, a tactical shot was possible to, um, nice. to eliminate the defender of, yeah. The Definitely, mm -hmm. uh, without any protection. Wow, very nice uh, small trick, that, which unfortunately was missed by black. Well, she played knight d5 automatically. She knows she likes this four knights uh, square in the center. Yeah, you can highlight it. Four knights are in the center, two white knights, two black knights. I always enjoy this kind of um, beautifully placed uh, chess pieces uh, on the board. And uh, yeah, and the black's position anyway, it seems very nice. I'm not sure about the a5 moves that white made earlier because, uh, okay. Well, uh, it does uh, not let black play a5 uh, herself, but at the same time, the pawn on a5 will need constant uh, protection and it will require the knight uh, to be almost glued to c4. And again, g3, this move has been made, which I don't really understand. This ah, okay, I think she's preparing e4, that's why she's playing g3 she's kind of protecting this f4 uh, square well that's so the only the reason behind this move that i see because i don't like it uh visually uh, op op optically but um uh, that's i think the idea behind this move neither do i but it is true that uh, it could be helpful and here for for the first time the bishop is uh getting to g2 fianchetto Okay, yeah. with queen. E2. Well, but on f3, it was uh, play. It was placed it on the same diagonal, right? But instead, white almost wasted two moves to get to g2. So I'm so not tempting. really. Um, I, I'm not sure it was necessary. And now you see, bishop takes d5. Wow, seems like a big positional um, 
decision, but in fact, uh, the idea is to play knight b6 on the next move. That's uh -huh, the idea behind it. Very, yeah, very nice. It is true, I also wanted to mention it, that g3 is quite unnatural here in this kind of positions. Plus, if you exchange the bishops, uh, light squared bishops now, there, there are weaknesses on the light squares, but okay, uh, there is... Nana does mean something uh, by this maneuver with knight b6. Now she will... Will she take the bishop later on? Well, black can decide to sacrifice this exchange by retreating the bishop while rook a8. I thought this too. is uh, special. Maybe but she was. Look at the time. 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 Nana has only 20 seconds. What happened? Where did she spend all this time? I didn't even notice. Uh, I guess what? on G3 move. Uh, no, it was actually on the move rook to C1. She mm -hmm. spent 53 seconds. And yeah, switching between these time formats and time controls can be challenging. I remember when I was playing Harika, at some point at the beginning of this uh, three plus one section, I just realized that I have, yeah, I have less than 20 seconds and I didn't even see time. Time um, came so by came so fast. So, uh, so yeah, so you need to adjust to this time format. Definitely. And I have to say that the bishop on e2 here would be really nice attacking this a6 pawn. Unfortunately, it's not there anymore. And I, I do not feel uh, convinced by this uh, idea after all, at least judging by the position that we have now when we decided to give away that, um, this bishop. Yeah, I liked f5 move so much. I don't know why knight d7 move has been made. I think the knight on b6, okay, it was uh, a very good looking knight, but it was not doing much there. So and definitely uh, it would have been better to keep the knight on c5. Putting the next ray to, to the queen now with the rook c8 and... Uh, Back to c5, I, um, knight c5, come on. I think... Uh, it's for the first time uh, so far that we see Irina being um, dominating on time. Yeah, yeah. That's what surprised me. And it was such a huge time advantage. Now it increased to 20 seconds, right? But it was much more. And again, it's so important not to let it uh, slip away completely. But now Black did not find the right uh, plan. She lost. Um, um, ah, Knight takes B3. Combination again. What is that? And uh, what's next? But it's not clear at all. Knight B3. And then queen... Bishop B5. Wow, but that's a, that's a tactic you oh, can no, easily yeah. uh, miss in your uh, tournament practice. It's only because of the computer's help we can see it. Knight B3 and then the quiet mm. Bishop B5. It's a very beautiful tactic, but wow, impossible so many tactics to find. Uh, switching every time the uh, evaluation. And none is about to win this game. Unfortunately for Irina, who had a tremendous position, a very nice position, a huge time advantage, and now look. Okay, it's less not time over yet. and less points. Over yet. We, we do have queens on the board. There might be a hope for a perpetual still, okay. even though we know even though we know that night is ah, oh, time again. Time. Nana. Nana. <gasps> oh, no way. I'm... There was a at least a perpetual. No way, Irina. Yeah. Maybe she you was. You cannot think. I mean, you should not think. Uh, this is definitely about your, 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 just your experience with the mouse and the, with the online blitz and with chess.com. That's software. what I'm saying. I mean, one yeah. second. It's so. It's not enough. Uh, and you cannot. I mean, when uh, you're playing uh, in such a match, you're under some nervous pressure. And you, sometimes you are not capable of um, controlling your own body. So your hands start shaking, at least uh, that's in my case. And when they start shaking, you're just uh, incapable of making a move, moves fast enough with your mouse. I'm not sure it's the case of Irina and Nana, but definitely a challenge for me when I'm uh, under such a pressure. I'm shaking and my hands are not, you know, uh, I'm not capable of controlling it. So it's quite tricky. It's quite tricky. And one second, uh, it's not enough. And it's a very, very unfortunate, of course, um, 
I should also add that it's more about your the technique of pre-moves, how much you master them. Because once you master them, you actually even gain the time. We have seen that so many times, even on every Tuesday. But here we go. These girls, yeah, should have pre-moves. I actually think that uh, that Queenie one could have been even a pre-move good idea for her. Uh, no, I, I would not agree. I mean, I'm not a big expert in pre-moves, but I think pre-moves, uh, especially when playing with increment, should shall only be made when you're like captured when uh, your opponent's reply is kind of forced but otherwise uh, i i'm not a big fan of pre-moving so usually i only make uh, pre-moves when i see for example uh, that my opponent might take a piece and it's like automatically i take back yes that is that is definitely yeah you don't have any other cho choice anyway but uh okay mm nevertheless uh ah, we, we have go. a change a change in the, openings change for, yeah that is what that was my point for the first time uh, arena crush didn't go for nimzo she started with the ready which then transposed to grunfeld and i wanted to add ddx c4 on the move number six uh is yeah, the sharpest is this, isn't it the sharpest one in this um well i'm not a big expert uh, c6 i think is a more like solid approach but d takes c4 it's also a possibility definitely and now the biggest advantage for white is that they have a center same thing that you mentioned before for those who are big um um somehow missed the first segment of this match Yes, for the, for those who are um, who are um, putting uh, a lot of importance to to the center, here white would be their um, uh, preferable uh, side definitely. So black needs to come up with the pawn breaks. Plus knight on c six, Alexandra with this pawn on c seven, isn't that uh, ugly? Well, it's a little. It's not really the place it's knight is dreaming of. I mean, it is a place, but only after letting the pawn from c7 or go forward uh, but uh, what to do what to do now the knight will go back and then probably or forward or to e5 somewhere right it will go move away and c6 move will come up definitely and we do have d5 it is well known whatever you have the center and your opponent doesn't take it. You need to continue advancing. This is how you gain advantage. But here, it's uh, it doesn't give that big of advantage for white. But look, Irina, Irina is pressing. She's pressing with time. She's pressing with the position. I mean, okay, it was very unfortunate for her to lose in the first game of this segment. But she's definitely the one who is um, playing better right now uh, in this segment uh using time better okay but unfortunately she lost the first one but her position here is just very nice she needs to develop her bishop one uh, minute 40 to 27 seconds is a huge time difference it's huge yeah and uh, it seems as nana has not really adjusted yet to the switch of time control and time formats she it seems as she's still playing this five plus one time control. And I think that's the same exact problems that I had with Harika uh, when uh, I did not really uh, adjust uh, to the situation with two minutes less than in the previous segment. And I suffered so much defeats because of that. Yeah. So many defeats, sorry. So the, the time management here is uh, extremely important, especially when we have changes so fast. You need to be uh, need to be a hameleon to be able to adapt uh, to whatever it's, is the weather. And now it's very important for Arena not to let this time advantage slip away as in the first game. She needs to use it. She needs to press uh, to play faster because it's very hard to play with seconds and we see we cannot name nana like a huge expert online expert she's a very strong blitz player but playing blitz over the board and playing blitz online is completely two different um uh, two Worlds. different games even we can say yes. so for arena the most important thing is now just to keep pace to keep to play faster to play faster and to press of course like the <laughs> ideal uh combination is to play fast and strong but at least at least fast 
And here we have um, E5. Yeah, E5, E5 is screaming four. Mm -hmm. He's screaming four. Well, she played F4 with the idea to play E5. Now E5 is huge. It's just so such a good move. Just closing the black bishop, closing the doors is diagonal for it. Uh, and again, just faster, a little bit faster because 20 to 10, it's not such a huge time difference. Just faster, king of two, bishop of three, g4, any move, just small move, big moves, but just faster. Yes, whenever you don't want to, what, you don't know what to do, you just uh, continue advancing, grabbing extra space. Mm, yeah, but you see, oi, 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 knight take b2. Ay, what a blunder. Oh, Nana did not take happen. the pawn. Okay, luckily, knight takes b2 and the knight c4. Rook d7 was a blunder. <gasps> a huge blunder. <clears throat> okay. But now we're back. We're back with seconds. Uh, just don't repeat the moves. No, no, no. No, no repetition. No, Good. of course. Rook c1. Okay. Good. C1. B4. Come on. No, okay. Rook c3 preparing before. Ah, b3. Even. Even better. Even better. A4, A4, good. Knight wow. takes C6. Restricting the pieces. And here we go. The pawn is ours. The knight is protected. Come on, don't forget about time. Arena, don't think. Don't forget about time, please. But the position is won. But just make your moves faster. Because uh, ah, it will be very, very unfortunate. Oh, to... no. Rook D4. Puzzle rush. Rook D4. Uh, Rook G1. Rook D4. Oh, Rook G1 check. check. Everything Everyone. is under control. But Rook D4 okay. is in the air. Ay, ay, ay. Rook d3, and now no, uh -oh. Irina, Irina did not manage to. Um, oi, <gasps> oh <my> d4. God, <laughs> and you talk about speaking pre of pre moves, I know, uh, pre -moves. Pre -moves uh, are both pre moved. Okay, happens well. Once again, with the with their time management, I would say both of them are capable of losing on time in any moment, so we should the tension is still there. Yes, it is. It is, but it's uh, of course oh, knight h6, <gasps> knight f7, and now it's double h again. Uh -huh. Knight d6, knight c4, and f5. If the knight goes to a4, f5, e6, is a possibility. Well, it's a. Uh, I wanted to say it's a draw. It should be a draw, but uh, I believe not anymore. Okay. It's uh, very close to being lost for. Why? Oh, no. oh you, you, totally but that's lost. a lost uh, upon yeah. game. Come on. No, 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 no. You cannot yeah. make such mistakes even in um even with seconds because even the king is seconds, too yeah. far from the file. It, it was also about night end games and in night end games, uh pawn down is as if it was a pawn end game. So definitely was uh um in black's favor, but there was still a yeah, she shouldn't have No, with the knights on the board it uh, would be a draw, yeah, but uh Without the knights, but again, you see, just uh, Irina, she's playing well. I mean, she's pressing uh, in both these uh, two games was three plus one. She had in both games she had huge time advantage and positional advantage. But since everything is decided with seconds, she's just a little bit somehow slower. A little Nana. bit behind, but yeah, she definitely, um, she definitely is showing a lot of fight and puts a lot of uh, pressure there. So there is just this tiny, small little thing every time that uh, is missing. But okay, Nana is leading four points. That is not a big deal for no, now. That is already getting bigger. It's and, getting bigger. Uh, yeah, it's getting bigger. Four is already a lot. I mean, two is fine, but four, I think it's uh, and. It's also quite unfortunate because it uh, disappoints, right? Uh, Irina, she's not. Uh, um, she might be losing her confidence. You mean? Yeah, confidence, and uh, she starts. Uh, she, she, well, she just gets disappointed, and uh, it distracts her even more. Yeah, and she shouldn't let her emotions. Uh, yeah, because we talked play. about emotions, about controlling it, about being able to forget what just happened, but it's not that easy, right? Yes, you play every game, every move, you focus on every single one of them, but but you're just you're a human being. If you lost in a one position, how can you stop thinking about it? Yeah, definitely. And... Well, there is only one way you do need to do that and that's the only recipe so uh uh the person who manages with that uh, wins the um usually wins the the matches so okay 
we do have once again a new position to our eyes. Uh, this was uh, this started to be some kind of an English, uh, English yeah, it is an opening. English opening, it is symmetrical English. one. Mm -hmm. Well, the position is about equal, right? Completely, completely uh, symmetrical. The only difference is the pawn on a5 versus the pawn on a3. But otherwise, before we now, start, now d5, I don't like this move. b5 is possible now. B5, the pawn break. Mm -hmm. the one that uh, Black is preparing here with the rook on b8. Mm -hmm. Before we start um, uh, seeing the action on the seconds, uh, may I ask you um, how, mm, let's say, how many approximately uh, openings should uh, one player prepare in such for such kind of matches? Let's say, are like one is one enough? Should there be two or like? It depends. You should understand that. The... Um, okay, it it depends on your opening repertoire. How wide is it? Uh, whether you are capable of playing several openings, because they in, in Blitz formats, this should be very uh, well prepared openings, right? You need to be familiar with structure, with positions, with situations. And um, for example, in my match against Harika, it seemed that she prepared only one line with white and only one line with black. And when it didn't work out, she just switched to play in whatever she could. And uh, it was just my problems that I wasn't able to uh, get uh, more winning positions uh, out of uh, the opening she played. So, um, so to be, she wasn't that uh, prepared for any other openings that happened later well, on. Well, that's, still it didn't, a, that's uh... an impression that I had. So mm -hmm. she and had in the fact. But again, I played uh, several matches last year, and uh, there were opponents, um, my opponents, who played, who definitely prepared like several lines and completely different openings for one match. But it requires more more time, more energy, and more. Um, you also should understand that your brain gets tired if you repeat so much theory, right? Uh, uh, you need to be fresh and ready to play. And so at the end, uh, it just your concentration, your freshness, your ability to play on seconds decide the match, not really an opening you play. Oh, yes, openings are quite important. It gives you, uh, it can... Especially when opening. you're mixing out uh, like 10, 15 moves uh, while your opponent is still thinking, it gives you a, a huge uh, even time advantage. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes it does. But again, it's not the end of the world. Uh, it's, uh, rarely, uh, it's very rare that you win a game straight out of the opening. I mean, of course, there are some uh, very direct lines and if you jump into them, you need to know theory. But there are some openings just to play, play, play kind of openings. And speaking of here, the position was pretty um, close uh, until mm -hmm. now. But uh, with this d4 pawn mm -hmm. break is about to be open. And uh, we do see a uh, uh, white's advantage. Finally, especially, uh, yeah, black cannot take on d4 because uh, the d6 would uh, become weak. Um, but yeah, this really is quite co kind of shy, right? Bishop e4 was possible after e3. Instead of that, uh, white could have been more aggressive with e4. Yeah. But now again, it's all about time. The position is still quite tense, pretty equal, uh, probably a little bit uh, better and easier for white to play. But black has more time, or she had more time before this move. Mm -hmm. Oof, bishop e4, such a um uh, putting your pieces to under um under attack yeah it's yeah not usually, quite shaky yes not usually very um um very wise okay here it seems to be holdable yes I, i'm curious uh where it was uh like finishing our previous conversation i'm curious whether it was uh this is a new position for both of them Did yeah they it seems so it seems that they okay they played enough uh, opening battles it seems that they decided mm. to just to you know to go just for to focus on playing yeah yeah of course it's not uh, that new i mean nana played many kind of uh, similar setups ready english opening she's been playing all this kind of uh openings um, in her opening repertoire she has them but uh, yeah 
no more Queen's Gambit accepted, it seems. Mm -hmm. She had enough of that. Okay. Uh, now I do prefer Black's position yeah, uh, looking at their bishop totally yeah. dominating uh, versus bishop f1 and the d file. But okay, there is this c4, which is a protected pass pawn. That's why. But again, c5, as soon as you move the pawn to c5, <sighs> yeah. it's not uh, protected by the b3. Now we anymore. know. Now we know as soon as uh, the c pawn moves, it activates the bishop. After bishop c4 that we see in the blunder. It does, but uh, Nana did uh, manage to get her king in the center, to get her king oh, wow. support the c pawn. And now it's a pawn race. Who's going to be faster? Whose look pawns are going to be greater? Look they're playing, yeah. Very, very complex. Ah, king d5, look, it seems it's a <gasps> losing move because oh black's pawns are stronger. Ay, ay, ay. Nana oh just God. lost concentration for, uh, again, a few moves really and seconds. she's completely lost. And Oh my god, it changed so fast. We didn't even well, we didn't even manage to cover this moment. Well, it, it seemed as uh if white was pressing and winning at some point, but then after a few inaccurate moves, black pawns just became so much faster. I'm not sure at what point uh white uh computer misplayed. Says, uh, move, I think uh, around move, uh, move uh, 55. Yeah. When she pl uh, played king to d5, she needed to play probably rook e1. Ah, and that was a beautiful possibility to make a draw, if you can show it. Computer on says move, uh, move 54. Uh, yeah, move 55 one, instead of king d5 to yeah, play rook e1. Rook e1, you say? Yes, threatening to play e8 queen. Okay. And then black plays rook e8. Uh-huh. And then but is a is a e8 a threat because we have our opponent h2 which wants to to queen, so e8 rook takes. Well, g3 is e. also possible. Yes, g3 is also possible. But rook e8 is quite a logical move, right? To block this pawn and hope for to play g3 on the next move. Okay. And then mm, rook c1 back to c1 and uh, rook c8. It, it was possible to uh, finish this game in a draw, but anyway, it's already history. And we're back. We're Next back. game. We yeah. have ready again. Knight f3, c5, g3, knight c6, bishop g2. This is a different approach because in the previous ready, we saw black put the pawn on d5. Well, they will. It's like king c but a white playing it. The pawn, okay, the c pawn was on c7, now it is on c5, this is the difference, and it is definitely a, a good one for black. Uh, well, it's a king Indian in the first hand, as I say, the white is playing king Indian right now. Yes. Uh, so, but since white has an extra tempo, right, compared to half tempo, compared to black, white already managed to play e4, and e5 doesn't seem so obvious to me because white will take now on d5, will play knight c4 and will start attacking this e5 pawn. But maybe we'll it's okay, use it f6. As yeah, f6. this is what is happening. Mm -hmm. Knight takes e5, we expect knight c4. Yes, here we go. A rook e8 or f6 mm -hmm. are two possible options. Rook e8, this is what followed. Well, it's a commentator and as a spectator here of course <laughs> i'm happy that irina won and managed to decrease uh, the score difference so it's six and a half to three and a half 17 minutes to uh, till the end of the segment because well one plus one is a complete lottery i mean maybe not complete lottery but anything can happen Looking at the arena's time management i would call her a uh, favorite in um in the bullet, but okay, we never know. We will see. Yeah, hard to say. Hard to say. But this game can be quite important uh, because we have so 17 minutes. We have about two, maximum three games, right? Till the end of this format. True. Oof, bishop to e3. So she's offering this exchange. And again, it's not so clear for me why to give possibility for black to take this bishop to exchange this bishop mm, to give away this bishop it is true that mm -hmm. in such positions this c1 bishop usually just plays from the place where it yeah. is already yeah. it doesn't need to be moved anywhere plus if you move the a5 uh, if, if you move the a pawn 
the rook is also more or less uh, free. So yes, bishop e three was definitely. I don't. Um, yeah, I didn't really ball. like this decision, but um, anyway, I mean, she should have waited for the knight to go to c seven or somewhere and then play bishop e three. Yeah, maybe just queen c two uh, instead of bishop e three mm -hmm. would be an option, or even a five. Many moves, many moves were possible, but now we have what we have, and the pawn on d three should be somehow um being protected I actually, I actually really enjoy playing this uh, system um king's indian setup uh, in blitz myself because it um it is with quite white? you know uh, with with white yes you can play it against um different openings and uh as soon as you master the plans you have this moves quite fast and quite easily so you can gain some time advantage but Sometimes when your opponent when your opponent knows how to react, uh, you may even end up being worse. Like here, why it is well, it was also because of White's fault, but um, nevertheless. Yeah, yeah, because I think they got quite a comfortable position out of the opening, and then only this decision to exchange. You see, uh, again, exchanging. We, I mean, it, it was not a tactical blunder, but somehow after the strategic mistake. Mm -hmm. yes, it was a strategic mistake. It was not. A blunder even though they say that chess is a 99% tactics sometimes um, one could argue with that great positional yes decisions are required to win a game or not to lose it well what do we have now uh, black has two bishops advantage white has a weakness on d3 and even though the bishop on g2 seems to be very strong, but in fact, it's uh, shooting in empty space, into an empty space. I was just about to call these b2, c3 pawns as a barrier to the bishop g7. And uh, the moment. <laughs> and I it's completely. That, no more barriers. Yeah. yeah. Right. But okay, there is still e5 pawn that yeah, restricts the bishop. Here we go. Nice idea of advancing your pawns uh, for black on the king's side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, rook e2, a white wants to double the rook on the e file and try to put as many um, attacks on the e5 pawn as possible. Uh, but bishop h7 is made with an idea to play e4 at some point. So e4, and that's why white decided to go queen c1 in order not to stay under this x-raying bishop but e4 is a possibility at any moment right now and white needs to um, keep an eye on this possibility for black yeah it would definitely be also the most uh, logical approach since uh, black does have uh, two bishops advantage and the normal thing would be to activate them mm -hmm. okay h3 i guess the way just tries to 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 hold on the pressure to keep up with the position there is no there are no pawn breaks here for white they they just need to wait and uh to be ready for when they the the killer knocks in 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 their door oh yeah but again time now it's all about time so the players will start moving the pieces very fast and at some point the positions will open up eventually it will here we uh, go. I would just wanted to uh, suggest you this nice maneuver with knight uh, either h2 or d2 to f1 to e3 and yeah. to d5. A little yeah. bit slow, but look at the valuation. Uh, if we mm. manage to do that, could that yeah. save us? Yeah, somehow um, bishop f6 and g4 did oh, not nice. seem to be right. The knight is heading to d5. Nice, I predicted this. I'm so proud of this maneuver. It was a nice maneuver. It was a nice maneuver, but what to do with this nice looking knights now? <laughs> that is the question now. Huh? Yeah, and here we go. Queen Just a move after. Two, probably. Um, it's always a nice idea to put your queen against uh, your opponent's uh, king. Queen b2, maybe at one point. It, this oh, oh, oh. c4 is a terrible move. It's a terrible, terrible oh. move, but just Arena did not see how to protect this knight. Somehow mm -hmm. black managed to regroup the pieces and it's collapsing again. No, no. c5. Oh. It was c5. Yes, but uh, the position is collapsing. But now, now c5. 
It's played queen d2 or queen c1. Why it needs to. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, h4, h4, and it needs queen h5. Faster, otherwise, there will be mates. Why not queen takes g5? Ah! And <gasps> you see, Nana is losing on time. No yeah, way. and a completely winning position. And that's what I'm oh, saying. Uh, these, I mean, these players are not very big online experts. And as I said, there are going to be a lot of. Um, situations where just one player is not fast enough because one second is and why Irina is leaving all the time why 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 is she leaving all the time because normally there are no breaks um okay she's yeah. back she's like she's drinking back. water uh it is in your interest to 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 continue fast uh, speaking of the discussion we had yeah, previously it's a difficult question but yeah it's, it's a difficult it, question now that the leader is only of two points and there is also the whole bullet segment, uh, yeah, she's not in the rush to take back her, her points. Uh huh. Yes. Now, well, at least um, the pressure is back on Nana and uh, it's not that clear anymore, right? In any, case, uh, in any case, we, we do see that the match is tense. Mm -hmm. this, is, uh, the, this is a very big uh, uh, conclusion uh, comparing to our predictions um, and um, just before we started. Okay, London, interesting. Finally, finally. Interesting. How come? Not a single game of, of London so <laughs> far. Yes, I recall Elizabeth Pets uh, saying that it was uh, with the London's... Um, uh, opening that she managed to to win the european rapid and blitz uh, championships white. yes 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 with white. White. Mm -hmm. yeah so it's a uh, very no very well known theoretical line bishop f5 a very nice move uh using the fact that the rook is still trapped on a1 and after queen takes a5 queen takes b2 is possible uh, but at the same time that means that white needs to retreat her queen and it gives black more time. And the bishop is already developed to f5, which is also a great thing. Very nice idea to go immediately and exchange this bishop. Um, I remember it was a very nice, actually, from theoretical point of view, because you straight away you uh, um, get rid of the most, so to be the strongest piece of white uh, that was in the position. I like this position for um, black. Yes, black definitely has um, an advantage now. Um, okay, Maybe let us see. Seven. Let us see what will be H five probably now. She castled immediately, but I would think about playing H five. H five and attacking, nice. Well, or maybe even H six and G five. Well, the center is closed. Um, you can try to to be more creative. Well, not to castle immediately, but anyway, of course, a uh, short side castle cannot be um, a mistake here as well. It's just a more solid approach to the position. Definitely. And um, okay, so um, two points uh, I had Nana is, uh, that's not that much anymore. Well, especially since we remember that just two games ago it was four points advantage, right? And uh, that means that the match initiative now is in uh, Arena's hands. She definitely has a, so to say, a psychological advantage here. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's easier for her to play here. I mean, B5, A5, B4, right? She has it's an just... easy, yeah, she has an easy plan, yes. And it's also a typical plan for this kind of structure because once you see the c4 pawn, you immediately understand that your pawns need to advance from this queen side. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is not to push b4 too early, not to miss uh, knight d to take c4. Ah, nice. Let me show it to our viewers. b4, knight d takes c4, and in case of the capture, it would be, well, probably with the knight. Nice. And actually right now, bishop takes d5 as a possibility, it seems. Bishop takes. Uh -huh. nice. Well, was a possibility. Was in before B3. Because the queen, nice. uh, black's queen protecting two pieces. 
and, and then if knight takes e5 after bishop takes d5 and takes c5 rook no, takes no no no, no, no not no. this not this moment no after bishop ah you mean uh yeah yes that's right yeah, yeah i'm sorry mm -hmm. yeah but You're it right. was still okay it was equal actually no it was, no, it was not a losing yeah but it was just a nice possibility a nice tactical mm -hmm. possibility to support yeah to somehow activate the pieces uh, for mm -hmm. for white it didn't but happen. now the knight is not hanging anymore on c6 which is a great news for black they don't need to worry about this knight and um yeah, the big question right now is to take on b3 or not to take. Yeah, usually you don't want to take on b3 to um, a little bit uh, keep somehow. Keep the tension. Yes, to keep the tension and improve white structure, pawn structure. But in that, in this particular case, maybe the pawn on c3 uh, was becoming so weak that it would be interesting to consider. But anyway, anyway. Irina decided to keep the pressure on. By the position, we would say even that there is a game for two results. Uh, either Black manages to convert his advantage or uh, not. But so many pieces on the board, still uh, nothing is clear. And plus, it's just a blitz game. No, <laughs> very, very nice happens. position for Black. And also very nice time situation, right? Again, with Irina leading um, 30 seconds on the clock. Uh, well, and if Nana loses this one, then it's going to be, well, it's not going to be clear at all. We have five and a half minutes till the end of this segment, which means this game and another game with the same time control will be played before the next, uh, before the next break. And, um, um, our, our dear viewers are, little bit discouraged by the fact that we uh, um we do not uh ignoring the chat yeah but we ignore the chat so not at all please uh do ask our us questions if you have do not hesitate we will make sure to do our best to answer to Probably them we just don't see interesting questions to answer that could be the reason we're very picky <laughs> mm -hmm. okay and um well Irina has a possibility to win this one as well. Okay, yes, there's this a4 pawn. It's uh, definitely not comparable to 3-3 three, three pawn at all. So clear advantage for Arena and now a pawn up. Okay. Well, now, now there is nothing to compare. <laughs> there is nothing the to compare. The pawn on c3 is it's gone. It's gone. Different. Yes. Oops. Some counter counter attack. Good, oh. good. You need to try and look for this possibilities to counter attack. Okay, Arena, don't worry. Rook F8 still holds. Still nice. Holds. It's scary. It's scary to make such moves, but but it's better suggest, than being checkmated. I would suggest the same thing that Irina does. Uh, once you change this knight, no, don't don't chase it. Change it. Okay, there was well, no way. Well, left takes e5 yeah. is fine as well. At yeah. least there is no more this annoying ah, there is no more annoying oh. nine, no more annoying pawns. Ay, ay, ay. It's oh my a god, turn over. Ay. oh my god, no Wait. way, don't tell me, don't tell me it, it changed again. Maybe it's gonna be a draw. Yes, well, there is a pass pawn, a pass pawn. Ay, rook h6, six. rook h6, she missed it. Oh. It's a pass mm -hmm. pawn, and Irene is losing it. Oh, what oh. a game. Oh. No, what a game no. and you see so arena's face calm. arena face says it all yeah that's a very unfortunate loss i think oh. i mean and you see how still nana is i mean her face it's unbelievable she's completely completely yeah she does she definitely shows way less emotions uh, during the whole match than arena and I think does she feels less emotions uh, and it's that very very that important that could be true yeah, yeah. You do need to to stay cold blood here. There is nothing to do anymore in this position. Now it is definitely completely lost. Unless miracle happens, uh, White will win this game. And uh, 
speaking yeah, of that's psychological a, that's advantage. a pity i would yeah. say that's a pity because Definitely. i was looking for a 10 situation with one score difference and a complete uh, like three in a row i think for arena but instead instead we're back to two uh how many four and a half two two yeah it's gonna be seven and a half three. to four and a half so we're back to Yes, I Three wanted. Points difference. Mm -hmm. I wanted to point out that you know, from practical point of view, that position was not so easy to convert because no, nothing is easy. We know that the most difficult thing is to win a winning position. Yeah. True, true, true. But once uh, uh, White started uh, these jumps with Queen H5, uh, yes, there was some. It, it, it was annoying. It was annoying, and there was there was a need to find something. And um, yeah, definitely confused. It was not. Uh, as obvious yeah here we go once again red of starting with ready going to uh, king's uh, indian setup this time versus karakan i would say yeah karakan you saw some karakan i the karakan pawn structure don't you ah, okay. okay yeah the well, karakan pawn structure right well it could be also french pawn structure but with a bishop on a it can be anything yes. call it. yeah the, yeah Soon to be pillar structure, but not yet, not yet. <laughs> okay. Um, and this one is going to be the last game. Yeah, that's of this for sure. second segment. Um, Before we jump into bullets, B3, okay. Um, you know, one thing which uh, pleases me a lot about this match is that I see so many positions that uh, I play myself that I actually feel inspired to look how these uh, players. Um, how these players uh, actually approach it. So it's very interesting for you to follow this. Match, yeah, it's right? also educational in a way. Uh -huh. Good, good. So uh, White's Bishop will definitely come to, uh, not definitely actually, I wanted to place it to B2, but here after C3, not anymore. Oh, here we go, Knight on D3. Uh, can we kick it? We need to kick it, otherwise it would be uh, a killing um, night. Was it necessary to play c3 straight away? Maybe it would have been better to start with e5 or even go back with the knight too. Anyway, because... Yeah. The... Arena is definitely uh, a dynamical player, at least judging by... Do you this... think so? No, yeah, no. I think she's completely a position of... Mm -mm. I would not agree with you. Out of all the games that I played for CERN, we played many because we played with Arena. The first time we faced each other was in 1995 in a World Youth Championship under 12. And I played, I played with Arena many times. Well, in this case, uh, she, she did do a strategical mistake uh, uh, playing C3. It was a little bit uh, too early. Yeah, okay, okay, let us continue. Let us see how it goes. And how would you describe Nana in this case? Uh, what would be her style? Would you call her universal? Yeah, I think so. But she also tends to, um, well, at least she likes to play positionally, but I think at the bottom of her heart, she <laughs> prefers tactical battles. <laughs> yeah also it's sometimes very hard to say so uh looking at her opening repertoire yes definitely okay so one thing which is um interesting here is that from one side when you look at this position you see aha uh -huh, White has the file white has the space white has the center there is d6 pawn so White should have an advantage, but uh, here we go. Not so clear. Black. Uh, why would black be better here, Alexandra? Well, again, I think very concrete uh, ways. I mean, now the pawn on b3 is hanging, and if white manages to play f4, I think the position will be uh, so much better for white. That's why black needs black needs to uh, stop this. Uh, f4 move by playing bishop g5 and, which was played yeah mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Just why it doesn't have this one um, move to consolidate somewhere. So there is like a, as if there was a one to tempi lack uh, for, for it to make it better for white. Mm -hmm. I think so. Okay. So 97 going back passive, but still um, in black's favor. What is she thinking of? Is there any choice here with this knight being attacked? Um, okay. 97. Yeah, that was a good question. <laughs> A rookie one. Okay, where, yeah, if only we could kick out this bishop on f4, it is so annoying. It is, and it's not so clear how to do it, right? Because after queen f3, the pawn e5 will be hanging, and sometimes there are situations when um, one piece is standing like inside uh, an opponent's uh, camp and it's still very hard to get rid of it. Yeah. Even this though it's it. in the middle of opponent's pieces position. Whenever there is a piece in uh, your camp, you need immediately either to kick it or to chase it. You yeah, can attack, attack the number one, as my late coach used to say. You cannot um, just live with this piece in your camp. And um, by the way, my dream came true. The bishop is no longer there. And it's so much better for white now. Yeah, we can breathe. Now with <laughs> white, we can breathe. F4 can be played, H4. Yeah, the position actually started looking... Uh, actually, bishop F1 is a very nice move. Securing the knight on B2, not letting it go uh -huh. away. But Irina has another plan in mind. F4 needs to be played. And because otherwise F6 will come and... Uh, the pawn um, can be lost. Please play f4. Okay, good. Yes, good. f4, because otherwise there would be this diagonal. Mm -hmm. Queen g3, of course. I don't think the queen should be exchanged. And somehow uh, Irina is trying yeah, to put the pressure on the g7 pawn. Um, but then it's not so clear what to do next, actually. She can collapse in the center. I don't think it was the right plan. To tell you the truth. Because there is a c5 pawn break, right? And uh, but what who cares? I mean, mm -hmm. now it's time. Queen h4 was a threat of rook g7, probably. Uh, why the bitch? Uh, what was rook d4? Oh my what god, is that? why she didn't take on h6. d4? She forgot to take on d4. Uh, what happened? She wanted to outsmart <gasps> her, opponent. and Nana loses on time. <gasps> oh Nana my god, loses minus, time. minus 13. Yeah, well, completely winning Stop position. Says, well, I don't know what happened. It's very yeah, hard to comment because yeah. after rook takes d4, for some reason, why didn't take on Wasn't d4? it a bluff? Just uh, no, I she, sacrificed no, she uh, mm -hmm. sacrificed an exchange. It was a normal decision for black, but why, why didn't take on d4? I have no idea. She just completely forgot um, about it. And Nana was, of course, thinking about uh, she takes d4 and calculating all the slides so she didn't even understand when uh, arena played h6 that she she didn't realize that she has this rook d2 check intermediate move uh, with a huge time advantage i mean uh, material advantage and look on move 40 and again why just simply forgot about the possibility to take the rook back again c takes d4 and uh well yeah no. an extra night an extra night was on the board and a completely winning situation just just the time but time is important in this online chess as uh, the position itself and we are we are to seven and a half to five and a half and everything anything is possible still 25 minutes with one plus one segment is a uh, front in front of us and the players we're looking forward to seeing the most exciting part of this battle and um Share your comments while in the break. Who are you rooting for? Support your favorite players and we'll be back soon.
and welcome back to the Women's Speed Chess Championship uh, match number five. We are approaching our third segment, bullet section, the most exciting one. But before we do that, let us give a short shout out to the Junior Chess Championship, Speed Chess Championship, which starts, the main event starts on the July 4 with a total prize fund of $35,000. Also, a very nice opportunity for junior players to compete online, very nice motivation and practice for all of those talented and promising chess players. Now, let's get back to the action Women's Speed Chess Championship. We have Nana Dugnidze leading two points ahead, Irina Crush. But as we have seen, there are so many changes in this match. Points are winning and losing for both of them. And uh, how many flags? Uh, I believe three losing oh, on time. I stopped counting. Already. I yeah, stopped uh, counting. Yeah, I counted but... three, but I do not guarantee that number. But uh, what's important is 25 minutes with one plus one segment is in front of us and anything can happen. Arena did her best to decrease this um, score difference but because she was losing, she was losing um, minus four, I believe, right after the first segment. Yes, this was the so, biggest difference of points. So now it's just two points difference and let's see let's see what's going on it's going to be happening very fast and i wanted to add the fun is going to start right now mm, surprise surprise we're back to the queen's gambit accepted territory i was not really expecting to see it but nana decided to to uh, bring it back to life and i am so pleased to see that you can't even imagine yeah i bet I bet. Well, the position, we discussed this position, we've witnessed this position in several games of this match. It's very um, tense, very unclear. It's very symmetrical, I would say. And G3, again, Nana is making this move that I I disagree completely with this move. But I'm just a commentator now, not the player. So it's up to the player to make these decisions. Uh, probably Nana likes this move for some reason. Uh, that I can't really uh, uh, see, uh, but again, maybe, yeah, preparing e4, protecting the f4 square, uh, but knight c3 is in there all the time, and Irina goes for it. She goes for it, and uh, this is the moment uh, I have been uh, uh, willing to uh, point this uh, question for, for so long. You do have breaks. There are there are um, openings that repeat. Is it reasonable to actually uh, look at the game briefly with the computer and see what is the thing that you should improve and repeat the lines improved version? Well, again, it's up to the player. Some prefer to um, stay calm, to forget about it, to focus on, on the next games. Uh, the others, especially if you have a trainer or someone who helps you, um, during these matches, uh, of course, ask for improvements, right? Because it's very, um, it's quite hard to do in a five minute break on your own. So yeah. unless someone else is helping you, well, maybe you can check two or three, um, maybe two, not two, two maximum critical positions. Principal lines like that, mm -hmm. queen f3, uh, that was completely wrong. It was only move number seven on the Oof. eight. The queen is not trapped, I hope. No, not yet. Bishop c4. Uh, Bishop five c5 Five milliseconds check. for Nana. Oi, oi. Oi, oi. But now she's pre-moving. She's pre-moving. We see how fast she's making the moves. And Arena completely, completely blundered. Ah, oh, what a pity. What a pity because she was the one pressing with time and the position was winning. Was winning for black and she made this unfortunate Bishop c6 move, trapping her queen, lost... Uh, time and position and now she's losing and it's just a question of um, Nana being able to complete the game to Not... control the time also mm -hmm. yeah yeah and it seems like she's doing it seems like she's no, doing that's it. a very unfortunate loss again for Irina because she was the one with a huge time and positional advantage and now <gasps> now it's lost yeah and the rook the rook is gone Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I had this idea like um, 
for some seconds in that moment where Nana had uh, five milliseconds. Um, I don't know for, how it's possible because yeah, you're getting me. just one second. How is it possible to have a few milliseconds left? Oh, that's an interesting question. <laughs> well, true. Okay. Yeah, I was anyway. thinking for a kind of a swindler, you know, put the piece somewhere strangely and know that your opponent will be like, like even, you know, what? Well, okay, that would be very dirty. Good work, okay. good work. Well, yeah. anyway, now um, Irina needs to win. And she is, uh, op- I mean, she chose this very nicely looking Pillsbury setup, right? With the knight in front of the pawn supported by the d4 and f4 pawns and g4, g5, queen h3 coming with a king side attack. Very unpleasant, of course, to play. But c4, look, she misses this a c4 idea. Very typical one for such kind of uh, structures when this pawn on c2 is kind of um, um, not yet backward, but uh, definitely not participating in, in the in the center. Mm-hmm. But luckily for her, Nana Nana uh, did not see it. She missed this uh, possibility. Oof, d takes c5. Well, at least c4 is not. Uh, it's not possible anymore, although it was quite an unexpected decision to take on c5, especially connected with the uh, bishop's exchange, because you want to keep this bishop on the board. Bishop takes h7! Bishop no, look. takes h7, the typical sacrifice with cheese. She didn't find it. Well... Just the wrong move order, right? Bishop takes h7, queen check on h5 or h6, and g6, forcing black to take on g6. And, uh, well, it's still very, very good for um, white. The position is very pleasant, but just you need to play faster. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. She goes for g6 because I think she didn't like the plan of uh, black to bring the knight to e4. Now she sacrificed the pawn, but she does have a lot of initiative and H1. the most important, the most rook important. G1. I'm surprised to see her thinking. I think King G1, Rook G, uh, King H1, okay. Rook G1 is almost automatically. Ah, yeah, yeah. Bishop takes E4. Oh, I don't like this move because after D takes E4, the 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 bishop was op- it was op- a ah, mate. it's a checkmate. Wow, well, I was t- talking about good bishop, you bad were... bishop, but it's a checkmate on the board. Yeah, who cares about good or bad pieces if the king is in trouble? Yeah, that is an interesting question. What would happen after that uh, d takes pawn, knight d5, and there would be e3 check. But maybe it would be just a check, and then there would be still threatening mate. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. So perhaps it wasn't working that much. Mm -hmm. And we're back to the English opening. Yeah, I think it's a wise choice because Nana is getting worse positions in the Queen's Gambit accepted. Okay, luckily for her, Arena misses... uh, a lot of chances, but otherwise, it's safer to play uh, an English opening in this particular situation for Nana. Okay, c5. Uh, positionally, too obvious, I would say. Mm-hmm. Here, black is uh, totally in favor. D4 could be weakness. Knight e4 eight now. Triple. D5 is not a we- uh yeah, it's not a weakness. D4 anymore. is hanging, the bishop is hanging, the knight is Everything hanging. Is Somehow Nana favor. doesn't manage to equalize with white. What's going on? Uh-huh, white is in trouble, black is okay, right? Yes, that's an interesting observation. It is true that uh it's been, uh, yeah, Arena definitely shows a very good uh, opening preparation, at least uh, against uh, her opponent in this match. Yeah. Okay, bishop f5, wonderful, wonderful two bishops, four black are on the board. The one from g7 is attacking the pawn on d4. It's not so clear how to protect it. Well, with the knight from f3, I suppose, right? No other way to do. True. Uh, interesting thing. Uh, exchanging these bishops, so would that be uh, would that be helping to wait to some kind of? Uh, well, um, usually, if your opponent has freedom. a two bishops advantage, it's uh, a good idea to exchange one of the bishops, right? True. Uh, probably black could have tried to exchange this bishop in a slightly different situation. Um, but okay, uh, Arena decided to. 
it's very difficult to play, you know, positionally improving your like game little by little in a bullet game. You need to have targets. And when you see like the concrete target, it's easier for you to play. And Arena found this target, which was the pawn on A2. And now she has an A pawn, which is obviously needed to be pushed as far as possible. I, I don't like this queen A2. Uh-huh. King to G3. Wow, what's going on? What's going on? Oh, wow. Activation of the king. I was just about to say that that rook on A7 was a monster I... rook and it proved his strength by simply getting rid of the pawn. But, okay, black is still holding. Well, now we will, yeah, we're just looking at the time, <laughs> the, at the clock. Uh, the situation and the evaluation will change. I mean, uh, E4 was, well, mm. uh, the wrong move right. because it kept uh, the C5, the advanced pawn protected. Of course, black should, um, should have done a anything what was in their power to destroy this defender of the sea pawn and now we see that the yeah just the sea pawn is coming oh wow once again, once again we do see that um nana gets a worse position but then plays confident plays fast and manages to outplay her opponent even in the worst positions well yeah it's more about play on seconds right about concentrating yeah. But also, in a way, you know, at least outplaying in this kind of uh, so to be um, section I one really plus one to resign fast here and start another one. Yeah, yes, because time is now money for Irina. Time is money for her. Three three points difference, and she needs to win. Now, how many games are left? So, fourteen minutes, and we spend two and a half minutes for each game, approximately. No two, let's say two and a half. Yeah. So how many games are left? Queen e one, interesting idea. About I... five. Five more games. Okay. Yeah, about five more games are left, and um, that means that she Irina... could do it. She could do it. Yeah, she 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 can, but um... isn't it three zero? Uh, what do you mean three zero? Uh, bullet section, bullet section. Isn't it three zero? We we had nine. Okay, nine six. We have three points difference. No, it's not three zero. It's not three zero. I'm trying to recall like yeah, the, the score. Been... You mean in the yeah bullet section. In, in the bullet yeah. section? Yeah. Well, I'll check now. But anyway, anyway, yeah. nice setup for uh, arena. Um, no, it's two two to one. Two in, to in one. The... Yeah. To one, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, we have some kind of a French setup for black. Um, Why to call it? <laughs> Wait, I don't know. Okay. Somehow um, you judge only the, you take only the structure of black and you look at it. Yes, I will. I will explain you, you why. I'll really, explain you, why. you cannot really, you know, separate this too. Why it is also playing. Uh, but yeah, I can. Let, let me it call French. it. Uh, it used to be it. a French structure for black. <laughs> No, but in fact, I will explain you why. Because um, imagine you start um, this uh, king's it against reminds the top. me this uh, story. You know, one lady is playing uh, the um, knights, uh, two knights defense, e4, e5, knight f3, knight uh, c6, bishop c4, knight f6. So she was going to play the two knights defense with white. She wanted her opponent to play. And the other replied, uh, her opponent replied with bishop c5. And it was during some one of the first uh, ladies, Chess Olympiad. And so this lady that was playing with white said, excuse me, but I'm playing the two knights defense. What are you playing? Like <laughs> I'm playing the French defense. What is why doing? What is why doing here? Yes, 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 it's true. Just uh, imagine you start uh, King's Indian setup against any opening of black. Mm -hmm. It is working for white. It will always be King's Indian, but black has um, many different... Um, structures wise he but can, can you go... play french defense in the king's own, uh, <laughs> in the king's uh, opening well e4 e6 d5 d3 and then knight d2 and g3 and etc for okay. instance well yes i see what you mean but yeah, uh, i mean a... in the queen's yeah. indian in the the pawns are also set up the same way in the queen's indian in uh different uh um, well, yeah, different closed yes, openings as yes, well. I understand. Yeah, 
So sure. for me, the French is also um, connected with white pawn setup. It's not like separated, right? We cannot say that if the pawn is on c6 and the other is on d5 is the Karakan. If white has not played e4, that's what I mean. <laughs> okay, well, ah, time. Irina, Speaking yeah, of... time. Uh, the position was uh, much better for white, for... but still mm -hmm. quite unclear and complex. Yeah. Uh, but okay, this time time was on Arena's side, and uh, she manages to get to two, no, two score difference, right? Nine and a half to seven and a half. Nana is leading, and we have the London. Again. We have the London, but we have the different London from the way we saw it before. Why two on Here, C5? Why two on C5, which is not uh, supposed to be giving any advantage for white. As far as I remember. Well, it's not about advantage here, right? It's about it's... the positions that you feel comfortable. Yeah, uh... yeah, mostly. And probably Nana well, trying to play as solid as possible, exchanging as many pieces as possible. And, uh, yes, and since the draws are in her favor, right? Generally, 10 yeah. minutes, 10 minutes till the end of the match. And that means that we have like four games maximum i would say maybe even three left yes sometimes when you need to make a draw uh people say it's better not to to try to make it on the board but just to play the position and it's always easier to make a draw from the advantage side than from like when you already have an advantage but okay it's a bullet game it's uh definitely not um meaning much when you do these conclusions yeah okay rook d8 with a threat of uh, bishop takes f2. Yeah. Knight on a4. Oh, well, boy. it will oh, come back way. eventually. Queen to b3, not missed. This idea, this trick, this trap. b5 is a possibility. She won't here. play it. She won't, she play, won't it. play it. It's very. Ah, oh, <gasps> she did. Wow. Congratulations. We underestimated Irina here. Mm -hmm. It's a very strong and very hard to uh, spot move in a one minute game but you see that immediately after that she solved all her problems i mean she develops a bishop with a threat right bishop e6 rook c8 immediately it's so much easier for black to play mm -hmm. and she needs to play fast also note how quickly nana refused to this uh, to take this uh, sacrifice well yes sometimes you need to um you know estimate the like the danger yeah. Bishop c4. Now bishop c4. Bishop c4 attacking the rook on the f1 who was protecting the pawn on f2. And now the spin is quite unfortunate. But oh. somehow black mm. managed to... Ooh. She does oh, it. Dude. I, was, I, I was scared that the, uh, the, queen the queen was gone. For the queen it was protected. Yeah. But now it's about equal. It's about equal and uh, it should be a draw, generally speaking. Okay. Uh, but again, there is some kind of advantage, uh, at least the king. The king mm. is better, but it's. Well, but how to break through? The knight yeah, on c3 is way. holding the way, right? It's like setting up the barrier. So, yeah, white will just go back and forth with her king, and there is no way to improve. That's why it's a draw. Okay, well, the situation Two. remains quite tense. I mean, in terms of a match uh, points, 10 to 8. 10 to 8 with a little bit less than eight minutes till the end of the game in the match so Irina does have theoretical chances to fight back to even the score anything is possible again anything is possible she does have some chances that is true um even three no maybe three too much but two games yeah definitely possible here and Irina is pressing she's the one pressing uh I mean, position-wise and time-wise. So why not? Why not win another one? And and put even more pressure on Nana. Because when one player is leading, I mean, no pressure really. But when the you know, score difference just uh, decreasing, it's getting more. You need to put pressure on your opponent. Yeah, you know, um, interesting question would be who has more pressure here? Nana, who is leading, and you have this, you know, uh, um, 
uh, pressure of being a leader or Arena who needs to to, to score back? Well, so Depends far. Depends on people. Yeah, it's difficult to say. Yeah. Knight a4, I like the move knight a4. Knight e5 also seems to be very nice. I like the plan of uh, putting pressure on the b6 pawn. Arena decided to go for a very interesting central combination and it pays off it pays off she is winning a pawn so she's a pawn up and 30 seconds advantage 30 seconds in a one minute game can you imagine oh, that's can you imagine lot. that that's a lot definitely with this nice rook c2 on the uh i'm i always try to translate it from russian i say stomach paradise but i, I know it's not the <laughs> the way how you call uh, it uh, you understand what i speak yeah of. yeah yeah mm -hmm. um yeah, I'm wondering if there was Probably a term. Probably there is a term. Our yeah. uh, spectators can help us, or chat can help. What is the term in English for the second or seventh rank when the rook gets there? Since there are so many pawns, yeah, we we'll call it, as Dina said, stomach paradise. I would never <laughs> translate it that way, but it sounds very <laughs> poetically, very yeah, nicely. It was a word-by-word -word translation, I guess. Yeah, recently I realized that um, there is no really term of like a mad piece, you know, when uh, peace keeps self-sacrificing in order to, if you take it, it's a stalemate. So it's not really, it's not a desperado. No, I would not call it desperado. But in English, there is no such uh, term. And getting back to the game time, no, no, no. Ah, and, and it's 10 uh, to 9. Uh, oh, 10 uh, to 9. And uh -huh. Nana is under a huge pressure. Four and a half minutes to go. So, but uh -huh, looking and we're at... in the Sicilian. What happened? Nana switched to E4. Wow. wow. And it's not only just a Sicilian, also a Spanish uh, type of Sicilian, a Rui Lopez type of Sicilian. Well, uh, I don't know what Rui Lopez in a Sicilian. I would not agree <laughs> with you here again. <laughs> oh, well, it's a Sicilian defense, but more like a delayed Alapin. It's called in on chess.com. I like it this way because I play the Alapin variation with the second C3 pretty often in Blitz. <laughs> And this uh, C3 um, on the third move uh, has its own like advantages and disadvantages, but definitely, well, White's plan is to get to prepare D4, but here it didn't go, it didn't, it didn't go the right yeah. way. And again, Irina is pressing and she's on the verge of leveling the score. Yeah, Rui Lopez Sicilian, that, that was yes. but no, okay, I, imagine, I imagine C3, D4 no. and black plays E5, that would be a yeah, Sicilian. Yes, that, I understand, uh, because after uh, E4, yeah. C5, knight F3, D6, bishop, B5, check, there are some lines that transpose yeah. into the Rui Lopez uh, structure. But Yeah, that's it, bishop. after knight E7 and yeah, then yeah. play C3 and bishop and either E5. two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I see what you mean, <laughs> but not in just this particular game, yes. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. We found the compromise yeah yeah no we i mean we understood each other that's the most important thing <laughs> true and what about this game will the score be even is is it going to be 10 10 i like the score 10 10 well it was one uh, 11 and a half to 11 and a half in our match with harika i was leading 11 and a half to 10 and a half with one game to go and in a completely winning end game I lost it. And Harika even the score, and uh, we went to play tie break, which I lost eventually. So, are we gonna see another tie break in the match? What are the odds? What do you see? What do you think? Yes, we shall know the answer pretty soon because this, um, oh, maybe it's not the last game, even like. No, no, okay. no, it's not gonna be the last game. No, they're gonna yeah. be at least. Uh, how many minutes do we have? Uh, we have two minutes. Yeah, I would say one more game after this one. One more, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, black squares are pretty weak for uh, white. I just wanted uh, to say that white was better, but uh, here we go. Black is already... Yeah. H5, I like H5, H4 plan. The queen on A5 is super strong now that it's... Yeah, um, true. 
why it needed to change that because it was dominating the whole position. Come on! Fast! Knight h5 is only move! What happened? Oh, ah! I didn't see it. Come on! How did... How? What happened? Your she opponent just played g3. She didn't see it. Uh, what do you mean she didn't see it? She didn't see the knight h5 option. She had a bug. Ah, she didn't see knight h5. That's the only explanation. No, it's okay, a draw. it perpetual, it's a draw. perpetual. Make oh, perpetual and start a new save. game. It's a lucky save for Irina because if she would lose, it would be over. Yeah, that would be over. Be now over. she okay, has the last Rina. chance to even the score. It's gonna be the last game. This one is the last game. It's one minute till the end of the match, unless the score is even. Because right now Nana is leading ten and a half to nine and a half. And everything is going to be decided in this one. Yes, it's just that. Um, we're here for two and a half hours, and it comes to the very last minute to decide <laughs> the match. This is a match point, and we are about to to see the history, the history of uh, chess.com. The history is in the making, the chess, yeah. <laughs> Of Women's Speed Chess Championship 2021. We are in the one eighth. Okay. Before we make the conclusions, let's just... Uh... We're rooting for tiebreaks, of course. We're rooting for tiebreaks, yeah. but I uh, doubt Nana would agree with us. Nana <laughs> is not looking for any more games. Nana is fine with uh, this two and a half hours of play. Uh, but uh, Irina wants to play more. She's just, you know, starting to feel the vibe. Okay, B3. <laughs> yes. She's just joining the party. Yes, yes. So King H2, Knight G5, Bishop E4, so many nicely looking attacking moves are possible for um, white and who cares about the queen side, right? Black apparently does care about the queen side. Knight of six, knight of six check is a possibility, a very unpleasant one, I can nice. assure you. And, and you're in the spot. Nice, nice. Although I didn't really see that after g takes f6, e takes f6, bishop d6 is possible, but Nana uh -huh. didn't see it either. Knight g5, okay. If it works, continue, continue with this. There is, only five. One Come on. Here. there is only one direction in always in this structure. Good, good, wow, nice, nice moves by Arena. She definitely, you know, feels this um, atmosphere of uh, being able to bring the match back because she was on the verge of losing after uh, losing the night and she managed to save it and somehow it gave her this confidence, this drive to plays this last game knight d7 rook e4 or rook takes e5 uh is it as e is it very easy to find i'm not sure bishop takes e5 for works as fine yes bishop bishop both, takes a8 also a possibility just in case but just play it fast please okay bishop okay. takes a8 knight okay good enough good enough just don't don't Lose on time, please. It's such a, a nicely played game. Bishop f4 with the idea of knight takes h6. So nice, so nice. So far, so good. Okay, fast, please don't, don't, just don't. Knight takes h6. Any move. Good, yes. good. Bishop takes h6. Check. It's still, still winning. So Home. Arena yeah. needs to win this game to even the score, and it's gonna be. Ten and a half to ten and a half. The position is completely won. It's just a question of handling the nerves, the time, ah, to keep to keep she the pace. She seems confident. I believe in her. She seems confident. Okay, good for her. I'm very happy to hear that because we are looking for the tie break. We want to see the tie break, right? Chat, please confirm. Confirm <laughs> with with Endgame something. With, with two pawns up. Endgame with two pawns up. So. Could be there is there are even mating nets here. King f three g four. Okay, h5. Eight, a seven. Yes, just one uh -huh. direction, one flow, oof, one flow. Oof. Okay, and the second one, the second one is coming. H five, H six, H seven. Good, good, good. <laughs> Rook eight, check. It was possible to play Rook eight. Okay, anyway, anyway, yes, just not easy. please don't just don't easy. don't lose on time. That's gonna be like we're gonna be so disappointed. I don't lose this bishop. Bishop yeah. Bishop Rook, Rook d five. Right. right? All good, ah, all good. Who cares that the rook on b5 is on prize? Uh, nobody cares. Game. Here nobody we go. cares. Too many pawns. Okay, go, 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 go. <laughs> you can even give away this one. Okay, go, 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 go. Yeah. Just true. no stalemate. Good. Wow. What wow, a game. That what was a an match. amazing game. What Just a match. I can't. An amazing 
game and we see the tie break format let me remind you uh, i've been there i know that no breaks no breaks at all and the tie break is coming tie break consists of four games one plus one so the same time control four additional games in case of a tie in case of the score two two after this four games two more additional games with one plus one will be played and we'll see we'll see wow that was a Oh, nerve-wracking game, I, <laughs> but I'm very happy for Arena. It was such a huge save for her because uh, well, I hardly believed in uh, the even score, to tell you the truth, after the uh, main... So many uh, games. It's, it's, you cannot really believe that every single half a point is that decisive because at the yeah, end of the indeed. day, the score is even. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, so we're waiting. They're making another, uh, I think, uh, uh, spin of wheel to decide the color. And well, Irina is gone, but I think uh, it's uh, just for a few short seconds. Um, actually, they both gone. And in my match, they didn't allow us to have any breaks after the um, main, well, main event after the... Uh, after the last game. Yeah, which and... seems pretty unfair because yeah, yeah. Uh, players uh, like any uh, well, you sportsman- need to, You know, to yeah, uh, adjust, you need some time to- To breathe. To prepare for the tie break because it's another strategy, right? You need, you need a few more seconds, uh, but okay. The match itself is quite long. Definitely. Okay, here we go. They mm -hmm. are back and we are about to see the tie breaks uh, of such a tense match. One thing which is clear, Alexandra, we didn't expect this match to be so tense and the opponents fighting so hard. Not at all. And we're so glad to be wrong in that sense. <laughs> we're so glad to be able to see the tie break. What happened? Why Nana is not making the move? Because the game just started. Ah, Nana, what happened? Why is she not making the move? Don't she doesn't know she's move? thinking. Oh, no. oh, okay. We there is an update. Ah. Uh, there is an update we had. Yeah, there's an update. I need to refresh. Okay, okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on? Okay, now we're back. We're it back in the Alapin again. again. Now that's yeah. like the classical Alapin with the second C3. Oh, I know a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot about this position. And actually, that's, uh, I think I've played like hundreds of games with this pawn structure in this concrete line. I'm not opting for bishop d2 on move number 10. But anyway, it's small nuances. This pawn structure is um, like asking for an attack because um, the pawn on e5 is kind of almost closing, like, cutting the board in two sides, the queen side and the uh, king side. And we see bishop a2, it's about to be transferred to b1. And with the pawn on e5, it's so easy to create an attack. You play bishop b1, queen e4, g6, h4, h5. And I think it's so much easier for white in a bullet game. And uh, what a change. Look, what a change from Nana. She played this Queen's Gambit. She played this English opening. And suddenly, when she saw that mm, nothing is working, you ask me how many openings one should prepare. And apparently, <laughs> Nana is ready to play a <laughs> everything. All of them. Yes, everything. It's uh, such a huge and dra drastic change from like closed opening D4, Knight F3, C4 to E4. Uh, but apparently she had this Alapin line prepared because Irina, she does play the uh, Sicilian all the time as black. She does play. And um, I played uh, an Alapin game against Irina in one of the Cairns Cup myself as well. It was a very interesting tense game. Another variation, by the way, I'm surprised to see why Irina opted for knight f6 here, not d5, the line that she played um, in the game against me. Uh, and we see that Nana is pressing in the position and in time. Bishop takes g6 is a possibility. Always it's a very tempting one. <laughs> it's a very tempting possibility. Maybe it's the wrong one, but you should accept it. You should take the uh, take the bishop and pray for the best, right? Maybe it's a practical one, at least. Well, at least you have an extra bishop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have an extra bishop. Sometimes it's so tempting to give up a piece for a few checks, but a piece is a piece. 
Oh. True, but now we have three pawns against this piece. Yeah. So, um, okay, still advantage on the black side. Only if white could change the queens. That would yeah. definitely be a very helpful uh, solution for them. So I think white's plan is to exchange the queens. If she manages to do so, then the position is uh, might very fast become in her favor. True. I was just going to say that the knight on the six was a perfect blockader, but... Uh... Yeah, you need to okay. make moves. That's the only problem. You need to make moves. And you need to make them fast. Oh, look, made she got it. Oh, oh she... my god, made in two. Oh boy. Was oh, that was painful. The queens. Why did not agree? <laughs> yeah, well, I had another opinion on this point. Okay. We have uh, ready. So Nana is taking the lead. One, two, zero. So now to assure the win, Nada needs to uh, score one more point. One, one and a half. One and a half. Because yeah. it's a four main. Still, still some work to do. Yeah, true. Again, one and, motion. Uh, and now we know that Irina is very good at recovering. Yeah. Well, she's um, pressing with uh, black. And again, new opening. The Dutch. The Dutch. Uh, so Nana is really very fluent in terms of openings nowadays. She is surprising her opponent with one and another. And knight c5, knight e4 was a very nice uh, maneuver by black because the situation mm, seemed to be very unpleasant for black after the opening. But after this knight c5, knight e4 maneuver, everything changed. And I'm not sure about a uh, tense move for white before I think it was a mistake. But again, it's very easy to judge when you have an evaluation bar, you don't have this time pressure, you're not tired of because of playing. It's so easy to you're give, in the commentary booth. Yeah, give uh, suggestions. But these players are already tired and um, went through such ups and downs. And Irina really uh, played an incredible, the incredible last game to even the score, just an amazing quality game for a one minute game just was so yeah and we see that probably it seems that she ran out of her power okay. with this game so she gave everything she gave everything every single uh energy left and now well she's about to lose this one as well she's an exchange down Yes, looks uh, losing. Okay, there is a uh, hope for two bishops, but yeah, no, not enough. Okay, let's just witness how it goes. Yeah, Nana has a big time advantage, and it's interesting, right, to see how this opening change uh, let uh, Nana um, get a superior hand uh, on tie breaks. So suddenly she switched to the first e4 and the Alapin uh, variation. And here she played the Dutch. It is curious to see so many new openings in terms of like the, the tie breaks. Yeah, so it's as if like this was that final um, Joker card that um, mm -hmm. she kept. Uh, she kept, yeah. yeah, in her pocket. Mm hmm. Indeed. And we see another Alapin. That's a good choice since white needs only draw. <laughs> and Alapin is a very solid uh, line, especially after uh, d5. And with bishop to g4. Actually, white is can... Is bishop g4 a dubious variation? No, no, no. White? It's a good, good line. It's good a line. good line. Yeah, but uh, uh, but not when you play for a win. Let's put okay. it this way. Okay. It's one of the main lines after it was one of the main setups for black after d5. So it's either bishop g4 and e6 or e6, right? Was the bishop uh, being on c8. But both are quite sensible, quite possible. And uh, positions with isolated pawns often appear on the board. 
Well, one thing I do know about isolated pawns is that here, if black exchanges light pieces, it would be in there for favor plus. Already light squared bishops are off the board, and the d5 uh, is the square for the knight. So black has a clear advantage. If he manages yes. to exchange uh, yeah, one more, let's say, couple of pieces, then uh, by attacking on d4, it would be an easy plan for black to even to try to win this game. I wouldn't, uh, at least from the position that we have now, I would say that... Uh, uh, opening wise, things went good for black. Yeah, definitely. White misplayed somehow, somewhere because uh, we know an isolated pawn is a weakness, right? So in order to compensate for this, like structure, structure, uh, positional and structural weakness, you need to get some initiative. And in this particular uh, game, why didn't manage to get this initiative? Somehow they misplayed, they exchanged too many pieces, and yes, exchanges are generally, pieces exchanges are generally for the side fighting against an isolated pawn. Yeah, the only thing I'm skeptical about is the exchange of the rooks. Uh, it, it's not the ideal thing, because who will attack the d4 pawn right, now? Right, yes, I agree with you. And that's why the yeah the the valuation of being equal can be explained yeah by this thing Very okay hard to yeah to break through yeah now it is a weakness but no one can attack it well you need to transfer to regroup somehow right the bishop to the big diagonal from d6 to f6 but anyway it seems as um, white has enough power to yeah. Well, it is nice to block the g3 and f2 on the same color as the bishop. Maybe f takes g4 would be an idea to keep the uh, tiny little hope for an passed pawn. Some breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, practically speaking. Okay. okay. But let's see what happens now because white needs, um, Irina needs to win this one in order to continue the match. Yeah. Bishop g5. Yeah, I think. Uh, that's one. Okay, now king c6, king d5, trying to get to d5. She didn't make this move because she was afraid of um, bishop f6 and knight b4, probably. Okay, but the king should go to d5. Yeah. And time. Look at the time. Tension, Again. tension, tension, tension. Time four seconds, four seconds. Oof, d5. d5. What a brave move! e5. Uh, I don't really like this move. And now, neither they, do they... I. And oh, now, now it's back. shaky. It's uh, shaky. No advantage. Knight uh, shake. Ah, ah, knight of seven was winning. It's time. Oh, time. No. Oh, no, 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 ah, no. What a pity. What a pity to move Bishop. the map. Somewhere bishop b6 attacking the f2 pawn. Yeah, what a pity. But before that, before knight g6, knight f7 was completely winning for white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was getting to a completely winning endgame. Well, what to do? Yeah, as I said, it felt like uh, Arena gave everything she could. It was in her power to even the score to get to this tie break. And it was a very well fought match for Arena. So big shout out, big congratulations to her. She definitely, uh, uh, she did, I think, I mean, we might have a chance to uh, ask her, but it feels she will not regret, you know, of playing it because uh, they started another game, but I think so, it, it's gonna be aborted. Yeah, it's gonna be, be aborted. aborted. Uh, Maybe. I don't know why they're playing. Um, maybe they didn't play enough, so they decided to play. <laughs> How many? Okay, let us count. Uh, no, 20, no, they played three games. The score 24? was ten and a half to ten and a half. I don't know. She would say play three games, three zero to no, no, no. We're not mistaken. Where yeah, is it no, playing? We're not What's going on? Um, I'm we're about to wrap up <laughs> to wrap up the broadcast. But yeah. I, what I was saying. Yes, okay. Ah, they're playing with five minutes. Okay, something is going on. Five minutes uh, on the clock. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, what uh, I wanted to say, I think uh, Irina will not have this, you know, uh, aftertaste of uh, uh, feeling that she didn't give everything she could to this match. Um, I mean, I had this uh, feeling after my match with Harika that somehow i don't know i could have i could have done better 
and I should have done better. And this feeling hurts even more than losing the match. That you cannot really say to yourself, yes, I, I did. I mean, I've done everything that was in my power today. Okay, I lost the match, but there is always should be one winner and one loser. And it's okay. And I go and prepare for the next one. But I, I think in this particular uh, case, Arena will be able to say, yeah. I did too. Yes, and um, I think I hope we will have a chance to uh, to talk to her about it before, uh, just after we go to a quick break. Okay. And welcome back to the Women's Speed Chess Championship matchup number five. We already have a clear winner. Grandmaster from Georgia, Nana Zagniza, has just won her match versus Irina Crush in a tie break. Oh my, Alexandra, what a heartbreaking match. That tension we saw, we definitely did not expect that. And let's, uh, let's admit it, we are glad to see that. We are excited it went this way. Yeah, of course. We are very happy that uh, Arena managed to even the score uh, and went to play the tie break. And actually, the players enjoy themselves so much. They have not, um, they did not want to finish this tie break on, uh, after three games only. They went to, to play on. They went to play on another, the last fourth game of the match. Uh, I don't know why and what happened uh well, the love of why, chess. why is, yes they love chess but why is this game was a five minute game well it's a mystery it's a mystery for our chat to solve um we might ask the players maybe they insisted on playing a five minute game they were so tired of this you know <laughs> ridiculously fast <laughs> bullet games uh that they want just to enjoy yes to enjoy chess and it's another interesting game at least I do think that I have um I have an an idea who would be a, a leader psychologically in this game. It would be Arena because she has something to fight for. She needs to consolidate her feelings. While Nana is expected to be already in a relaxed, you know, smooth way. Okay, I won the match. I did the job. Now time to recover. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure because Nana, you know, she did it. She's in the quarters. So. She can enjoy chess. She can focus now not on seconds slipping away, but on her performance in the, on the tie break and the match overall. She can, she, 
you can just play chess without thinking about the result. And um, well, and we need to congratulate Nana on this win. And uh, I think we will have a chance, right, later on to show the uh, knockout bracket and who's going to play who in the quarters. I think Nana uh, is going to face Ekaterina Lagno, if I'm not mistaken. But we will check. We will double check later on when we are ready. Oh, we are. Oh, how fast. Magic, magic, yes. And Nana is not there yet, but she will be. And yes, she will play against Katerina Lagno. Uh, and this time, I think that time, Nana will be an underdog in the match. Well, against Katerina, everyone almost is an underdog. She's a very strong uh, blitz player of uh, current women's blitz world champion so you cannot be a world champion um, and be uh, a weak blitz player uh, so it's gonna be a very tough match for nana but it's gonna happen next week and for the moment the job is done the match is won and she can just focus on checking the opponent's king Yes, we are expecting both players to join us for a short interview and uh, we will have a chance to talk to them um, to, to see how it went from their perspective. Yeah, indeed, because commentators and spectators see the match and the games from their own perspective. And uh, it's completely different from players. It can be completely different from players perspective perspective okay now it's over it's officially over nana won the tie break for for zero in her favor and we're going on a break and we'll be back with the players
and welcome back to the final stage of this matchup number five, Women's Speed Chess Championship. We do have a winner here with us, Nana Zagnidze, Grandmaster from Georgia, and also runner-up, Arena Crush, Grandmaster from United States. Arena, it is not the result that you uh, wanted but boy, what an amazing comeback. We were rooting for you so much. Well, obviously, because we just wanted to have more action here. But how did it go for you? How did you manage to come back so, so nicely? Yeah, I mean, well, I wanted to try to make it a competitive match, right? I mean, that was actually my first goal. Like the, for the fans watching, no one wants to see like a total blowout. And obviously it didn't start off the best way for me. And I think I struggled in, in the five minute, especially three minute was also, I mean, uh, the important thing was keeping it close. Yeah. As, as you go into the final portion and then somehow the bullet just uh, was working out for me. Um, so yeah, I was happy. I was happy to, to make it close and exciting. Well done, Irina and Nana, congratulations. Uh, how did you manage to play tie breaks uh, so convincingly after Irina managed to even the score? Uh, what a change in the opening. You just completely changed everything. You played the Alapin, you played the E4, you played the Dash with black. How did you manage to, to yeah, play because so well? This red didn't work at all for me. I mean, I was losing all the game with this red the opening. So. Yeah, that's why I decided to change and uh, it worked worked out. So yeah, I'm satisfied. But actually I told already to Arena that in the bullet game, I thought at some moment, uh, somebody has changed my opponent because, <laughs> because she was playing so quickly and she was so well that, I mean, I didn't know what to do, you know? And then, I don't know, finally I, I, I decided to change all, all course and yeah. Well, congratulations. What are you expecting from the quarters? You're playing against Katerina in the quarterfinals. Yeah, I, I, hope, I hope it's going to be a very interesting match and the uh, viewer will enjoy. So, yeah. Okay, well, great match, great fight. We enjoyed it very much. I hope you do as well. I know it can be tiring because these matches are very long. Um, have a good day or the rest of the day. And Nana, good luck in your next match. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we have the knockout bracket on the screen right now. That's, that's um, how the tournament will go on. Uh, and we already we... Uh, have the name of Nana here. We yes, update. it's updated. It's uh, updated. Nana is going to play in the quarters against Katerina Lagno. We have uh, three other quarterfinalists uh, in the bracket. Uh, three more quarterfinalists are about to be determined. So we have three more uh, matches of the one eight of the final, uh, which are going to be, I hope, as exciting as the first five. So uh, the next one is going to be, uh, actually tomorrow, it's going to be a double header. It's going to, um, they're going to be played two matches. What an exciting Saturday uh, awaits us. Leiting J is going to play against uh, Vaishali and then followed by a uh, Ukrainian match, uh, two compatriots, Anna Muzichuk and Yulia Osmak uh, are facing each other. And then last but not least on Sunday, we're expecting to see the former women's world champion, Hao Yi Fang, uh, playing against um, Gulnar Mamadova. So another very uh, interesting uh, match up. Uh, Dina, what are you expecting? What are you I am expecting for? a very, very hot weekend uh, chess-wise and uh, I am also thrilled to see, uh, to see um, the the higher rated the most higher rated active uh, or so to be active player how you find to see competing again that is uh these days it's a very unique situation and uh this is gonna be so exciting yeah. uh, actually how you find is playing uh not only in this tournament but in some other online tournaments and the big question remains is uh, does it mean she's preparing for the candidates 2022 who knows she might play it there 
she might uh, compete for the title again. We definitely hope so. But let's start with the Women's Speed Chess Championship. Three matches of the one-eighth of the final to wrap up the week. And next week, the quarterfinals. Very, very exciting and uh, interesting events. I'm so happy to see uh, this event taking place because it means a lot for women's chess. It supports women's chess tremendously, not only the players, but the commentators as well. So there are many people behind it uh, that are happy about this event. And uh, Dina, thank you so much for uh, commentating together um, with me. Um, actually, time <laughs> time flew uh, by very fast, uh, much faster when I was playing because it seemed uh, such a long match two days ago when I was playing and here, this today it was very very interesting and entertaining it was definitely super exciting for me it was also a first time we commentated together on english and it was a great pleasure to me as well and i hope to meet you all uh, soon here i will be covering more of the women's pitch chess championships so stay tuned <laughs>